Boxing is the biggest eye in the world, but it's also the biggest low. Why do you keep flipping these tables? It's just like chucking it down the back of fire for me. All of a sudden, it's, it ignited me and I'm off. Has he got the same hunger? I'm his father and I will keep him hungry because he's got unfinished business. What's his unfinished business? Win some proper titles, what we set out to do in the beginning. Jake Paul and Tommy was the biggest fight in the world and there probably will never be another one as big. What's your exact prediction for the Tommy Fury KSI fight? We have to knock him out, don't we? We cannot leave anything to chance. But if he don't knock him out, I'm going to be very, very, very disappointed. And how do you rate KSI compared to Jake Paul? They're all on the same level, but Tommy is leagues above these people. And then what about the Tyson and Ganu fight? No, nobody can touch Tyson in a boxing match. You want to fight him? Fight Win, lose, fight. or draw, I'll fight Mike Tyson. I'm frightened of no man with a pair of arms or a pair of feet or a pair of nuts. I'm frightened of no living being. I'm afraid of God. We're welcoming back to the show the legend that is John Fury. We're trying our best to get Tyson. If you want us to get Tyson Fury on the show, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on, and we'll keep bringing great guests like John Fury. I think they sold uh, 22,000 tickets in four hours. For? For the KSI. Wow. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That is unbelievable. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, man, so jobs are good. Man. Yeah. It's all rolling well. Yeah. And you keep him well, life's good. Fit as a fiddle, mate. Yeah. Tra training at most days, five days a week myself, doing right. a bit with these. You know, it's been pretty good. Yeah. And we've got a great place here to train, haven't we? Yeah, are you in camp now then? Yeah, we're in camp here. Oh, right. Well, yeah. thanks, thanks for um, doing this for us now. Uh, listen, now I've got not sparring until four o'clock, so. No. I'll sit, fit yeah. it in between, isn't it? I see you still do a lot of sparring and stuff yourself. Got to keep it your hand in. Yeah, yeah. Because you never know what's coming around that corner. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I always believe age is a number. Right. It's what's inside of a man like you there. You took your first fight. First fight you? at 44, yeah. Yeah, surprise yourself. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And I think I'm in a lot better condition now than what I've ever been, to be yeah. honest. Because I've had time on my hands to do what I have to do. Yeah. Like back in my younger days, like there was no time to do anything, just work, 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 and you come home, you're too tired to do any exercise. Yeah. Because if you had room for that, that means you didn't work hard enough during the day, sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So things are different now. Yeah. Well, let me just say, it's too, yeah. too much too late for me at my age now, sort of thing. <laughs> well, I'm having a bit of fun with it and I'm running with it, you know? Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Something yeah. Harry and I wonder about because Harry fought on the undercard. You did? Yeah. And um, how much you know sparring you should do? Because what I don't want to do in ten years is have my brain mashed up. I, you know, I need yeah. my brain. But of course, if it's always just body sparring, it's not the same, is it? No, you got to. It, it, you can do too much of anything. Yeah. Everything in moderation. Sparring, right. running, bags, yeah. circuit training. You got to know when to go with it and when not to. Right. And that's the key to this job. Not a lot of people know that. Yeah. Important information. Yeah. You gotta know, look at your man and judge him what he's up for in right. that day. Yeah. And I can tell him just looking at him, face oh. colour. Oh really? Yeah. You can see if oh yeah. you need to give them more or less. Yeah, and... yeah, just by the way they are. Yeah. The body language says everything, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, you know, they can't disguise it. No. You know, if you know what you're doing and after sixty years in the game. Yeah. <laughs> I think That's I know, a long time. I think I know a little bit. Yeah. Especially at this level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I you know, I trained for six months and I Too just, long. Yeah. Yeah, but fuck my wrists up. Yeah. Yeah. But I started from zero and yeah. I think a lot of it like in, in the business world, kind of the kind of the harder you work the better you do. you just got to get it in I wasn't and do your rest. thing, haven't you? Yeah. You know, on a, a late starter, you see, you can spend a lifetime in the gym and uh, you can leave most of it in there. Yeah. Learn on the job, I say. Right. And you'll do better, but sometimes yeah. six months training, it's a lot in it. Yeah, right? it is a it's lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Right? The body won't stand it. No. Obviously, you wasn't doing six months graph, was you really? What was it? No, tech but I probably was on average training maybe eight, nine times a week through that what? time. Well, I started like not very fit, never boxed before. Um, yeah, so. A little bit at a time, innit, you know? Yeah. You got baby steps in the job, innit? Yeah. Yeah, it depends who you was matching with, but it sounds, it wasn't a good match because a lot heavier than built bigger than No, you. no, so. but I mean, it was a great experience. It was so close. It's a great experience, but if you've been proper level pegging on the weight, 
Well, that's it. Yeah. And, you, and you was probably someone the same experience as yourself. You'd have yeah. been a good winner. Yeah. Was the fella experienced you was messing with or not? He'd had one um, so, white collar. So pretty much the same. Yeah, and he yeah, he lost three stone. Mm. Um, and we like I wanted five rounds because I knew I had the fitness on him and he wouldn't go there. And so we did three. And you yeah. know, if it had been four, I think I'd have got the decision or five. Yeah. Because I had the fitness on him. Or yeah. really fit. Um, but no, it was a... There's easier money, isn't there? Yeah, and well, I gave it all away to charity, so... But you can, again, I can only commend you for that. Yeah. Because after doing what you've done and had the experience and give your money away, yeah, that shows you that you're doing it passionately to help others yeah. and just for the experience. Yeah. But you've got that experience now and you can, uh, you, can, you can live with that for the rest of your life. Yeah. And move on and probably build on it. Or if, if not, just say, okay, I've been there. One and done. I've experienced yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Because it's, you know, obviously the emotions you go through. Well, you know you've done it yeah. so long. It is intense. I always say boxing is the biggest eye in the world, but it's also the biggest low. Right. You know. Yeah. If you're passionate about a sport like we are, and to lose... There's no worse a feeling in the entire no. world. And the whole world's watching you. Well, it's bereavement. It's, yeah. it's, it's on the same par as bereavement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To some people who's intense with it. You know, and um, the win, well, it's like you've been told you've got 200 years to live and you've got $10 trillion to live it with. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no better and bigger. But no. like I say, you've got to be able to handle the downside as well. Yeah. Because the downside can make him on a break him. Yeah. And life is about winning and losing. Yeah. And no matter who you are, at some point, there's somebody better going to come along. Of course. There's always a new kid on the block. <laughs> so what you do, you run with your job, enjoy it, but you've got to know when to call it a day as right. well. Yeah. I say finish on top, whatever you do. Right. Go out on top, smiling, no damage, and you're not... A sad statistic yeah. for people to laugh at, I guess. And how do you know when the top is? Because often you only know when the top is, is when you've gone back down the hill, uh, don't you? You know, you know, but some people ignore all the warnings. They ignore right. them because yeah. they don't want to see the warning signs of the end of a career. Right. So they think, yeah, I'll just one more buzz because it's the biggest rug in the world. Right. This kind of thing. An adrenaline rush, what the crowd give you, every people screaming your name, you're on top of everybody's bucket list yeah. it's hard to say no to that and all them things will make you ignore the body sign saying you've had enough right and do you think Tyson will struggle with that because it looks like he's going to struggle with that absolutely like yeah. all fighters do yeah like all fighters do because sadly when it's over it's over you've got nothing yeah. and the way Tyson lives his life that mundane life like taking a dog for a walk getting the kids up for school doing household work. I can't do that. I could never do that. Right. And I'm not even on anybody's level. I'm nobody. But I couldn't live my life like that. If I didn't have goals every day to do, someone to see, places to go, I'd crack up me. Really? Yeah. yeah. And do you and think I, that's part of how you've managed to keep your mental health good? Yes. Goals, something to work oh, on? Oh, listen, if I, I can't sit down and do nothing, Rob, because I'm in trouble otherwise. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm struggling in here. Right, you well, know, because you've not got a lot to do for a lot of the day. Because I've not got a lot to do for a lot of the day. You can only train so much during a day, you know, and at the end of the day, what do you do when you're not training? Yeah. What you do, I tend to do it myself, going for some nice long runs. Yeah. Use all the facilities, here, the gym, and by the time you've done that, you wake up, have your tea, you know, we've already done a gym session, a day's gone by. Yeah. But if I was to sit in my room all day, looking at that phone. No. I'd go in a low not place, I'd just nosedive. Yeah. But I will not let myself go there because I know it's not good for me. Yeah. There's a lot of people in this hotel. I maybe spoke to every one of them. Yeah. You know, because that's what I do. Yeah. Don't like meeting strange people who I've never spoke to before. You do or don't? I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we have a chat about different stuff, and I feel people you've never met before, you can learn a great deal off them. Yeah. Can't you? Yeah. They can say something, what you can use, what's invaluable to your yeah. life. Yeah. And they don't know they've said it. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I don't know they've told me until I think about it. I think, oh, it's very good that way. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, yeah. And that's what I say. No man's an island. Yeah. There's a lot of intelligent people out there, especially yeah. coming through these places. Yeah. Every day there's different folk here, and yeah. everyone's got a different story to tell. Mm. And I just find it so enthralling listening to people. Mm. It's knowledge, isn't it? Yeah. This is a random one, John, but is it true you in insured your testicles for 10 million? <laughs> No comment. Ah, come on! <laughs> Rob, who the hell <laughs> would want to insure some nobody's testicles? What do you mean for, nobody? For two, You've got the... For two dollars, then my million. <laughs> Listen, if people find it amusing what I say and do, yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah. I'm here to do one thing, put a smile on somebody's face. Right. And the ones who don't smile, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. But it's just me. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> there's a lot better men than me about this earth and not having any insurance at all. <laughs> and I can name 50 straight off if you want, but listen, that's another day. <laughs> but I'm happy with my nutsack. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm happy with my productions. And you know when, like, here's, I asked a load of people, yep. what do you want to ask John? A load. And there's a couple I want to save to the end, the more sort of serious ones. But one thing everyone wants to know is, why do you keep flipping these tables? Is this something you plan to do? Is it part of the promotion of the fight? Or do you genuinely just get a bit like in the moment and angry? I'm going to be truthful with the answer. Nothing staged, nothing plans. It happens to me within seconds. Right. I can be sat there calm and all of a sudden I'm on one. That's <laughs> it. I can't help it. Yeah. I went there with the best intention in the world to let them young lads have the thing. I just yeah. went to support Tommy. But the bad language, all that rubbish about people's girlfriends, fiancés, mm. you know, it's just like chucking a gallon of petrol at a fire. Right. All of a sudden it's, it ignited me and I'm off. I'm thinking, oh, I'm sick of this and I'm away. <laughs> you know, and I don't mean to do it, but I get, it's a free for all. And if anybody gets in the way, well, what can you do? Yeah. Yeah, so it, I just, just happens to me that's yeah. my character yeah. i can be i in, in my younger days I, I could be sat in the pub somebody say something to me what i didn't like i really within seconds game over game over or it'd be game over for me yeah didn't care one way or the other yeah you know it just happens within a second it's it's off yeah. and rolling because i'm not a man what how can i put it if you insult me i'm not going to take a week to think about it no i'm going to respond in a in a flash yeah and that's it. Yeah. That's how it happened. We're fighting. That's it. Right. And has that got you in trouble in the yeah. in the past? Well, that's why I was. That's why I've been to jail. Right. Yeah. And that was for fighting. Yeah. Quick yeah. on the draw. That was it. I would not be insulted. And that's it. And I don't need to think about it. It's done. No. I can look down, bang. I look up, nick you. That's yeah. it. Or you lick me. Right. You know. But um, that's what happens to me. Nothing in my life is planned or staged. Right. Because I'm not that kind of a person, and I couldn't do it. A man like me, if you see me try and act. It'd be terrible. Yeah. Because I can't do it. Yeah. I'm as thick as two short blocks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm dyslectic. I'm very badly educated. I'm a mental health sufferer. You know, how could I act out anything? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do it. What you see there is my character. I've been like that from being that size. I remember when my dad used to give me food and then I chuck it on the floor. But in seconds, if I, they give me my food and I didn't like my breakfast and my tea, I'd just fling it on the floor and I'd get. Kicked up the backside, slapped all on the back of the neck, but I didn't care. Yeah. I'd done it. It was on the floor within a second. The minute they give it to me, I don't like it, bump. Wow. And that's the way I've been all my life, you know. Yeah. Have you managed to sort of control it as you've got a little bit older and maybe hold it in a bit more? Because you can't go around fighting all the time, can you? And especially as you get older. Do you think you're better at handling it? <laughs> Situations again, isn't it? Right. Company we keep, yeah. places we're in, what people say and what they do can have an impact on that. Like sitting here with you guys, I could sit here for 12 months with you. Yeah. We'd never have a wrong word. No. It's when I think somebody is being sarcastic, somebody is trying to knock my family, right. knock me, but in a second I'll turn on you. Right. So, you, so have you maybe got smarter about where you spend your time so you don't put yourself in those situations? Absolutely. Yeah. You've just said what I was going to say to you. Yeah. 
I'm very careful and particular where I sit myself down at. Right. Because I know from, I can look at a group of people and say, yep, yeah, you go there, you're going away in the prison van. And I won't go near it. Right. I won't yeah. go near it, you know. And that's why you've got to be very mindful. Or I'm a mindful person. Yeah. As I've got older, I'm more mindful. I think a lot more. Yeah. But even though I'm mindful and think a lot more, I can say to hell with being mindful in a second. So I don't you, want to you're be still mindful. you and you still yeah. have that yeah. inside you, but yeah. you're just adapting your life to it. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working around it. Yeah. It's hard work. But that's quite a smart thing. Because if there is something that's inside of you and you just can't you can't change and that is you, but you don't put yourself in that situation, you are almost dealing with that problem. Yeah. Well, the last thing we want to do is be a nuisance. But unfortunately, as we get older, as we become somebody, there's a lot of jealousy in the mm. world. Yeah. And jealousy can cause people to do what they wouldn't normally do. Yeah. It's like only just the other week here. I think you're a gobshite, but I want a picture with you. <laughs> That's a good pitch for a photo. Huh? <laughs> I hope you, I'm sure you said no. I, I looked at him like that. <laughs> I said, we'll have a picture with you and I'll pray for you. Good day. Now I could have said, oh, my God, shut up, man. Have that, God, shut because that's what would have happened 25 years and he's spread all over the floor. But we're living in a different day now. <laughs> yeah. I've been fetched in a world where it's a world of war. My younger days is a world of war where an insult was took yeah. on board very, very insultingly. So that would be end up in a, a fight? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. If a man was prepared to insult you, he was prepared to have a fight with you. Yeah. Back in the day. And that, I was brought up in that world where fighting, eating, drinking and sleeping went hand in glove. Mm. It was nothing new for me to have a, a fight of a morning before I went to work. Right. Because somebody would irritate you. To that effect, I remember one time when I pulled on the garage to get some fuel in the car and it was a freezing cold day and I'm pointing to the man to switch the pump on. He had me there 10 minutes before he switched the pump on, I'm going, pump on. So I just put the nozzle back in, walked in the garage and chinned him. <laughs> now you'll learn from that. Now you'll learn to behave yourself. Yeah. You know, what, what does it end in? Yeah. Jail. Yeah. But people will push your buttons, won't they? Mm. But now, they're a bit more dafter, aren't they, today? To be honest, because I've been brought up old school and whatnot, and uh, people, when you've got to fight to survive in every aspect, to adjust to today's world, you've got to watch what you say, watch what you do, watch where you go. Yeah. It's hard work for me. So rather have all the hard work, I will just stick to people who want to be nice, because I'm generally a very nice person. Mm. And I'll do anything for anybody, by the way. If you're stuck, I'm going to help you. Yeah. No matter what my agenda is, if I see somebody in trouble with a car on the side of the road and I think I can help, I'm going to pull up and help you. Because that's what kind of a man I am. Yeah. Because there's two sides to everybody, aren't they? Mm. And I think, and I've lived my life on this assumption, I want to be treated as well as I treat other people. That's not much to ask for, is it? No. You know, if you show me respect, I'm going to show you more back. Mm. You know, I want to learn off you. I don't want to get beat up by you. No. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. two different things, isn't it? You know, if I can learn off educated people, which I've done all my life, you know, because without schooling, because back in the 70s when I was a young kid, you know, a gypsy for school, you wouldn't have learned no to All you got in school in the 70s was a good hiding. Mm. Good hidings in school in the 70s for a gypsy. No integration, they hated this idea, gang bully warfare, and that's all I knew. But times have moved over. People have seen the light more. In this world we're living today, there's a lot more you can talk about, a lot more you can do. You know, and people, it's accepted more, isn't it? It's mm. like this mental health thing. When I was a kid in 1979, 80, if you, oh, he's a mental, don't talk about that. No, people think I need the funny farm. No, 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 no. If people seen you taking an aspirin, they thought you was a lunatic. Right. 
Right. When I was, that was a family I come off. Yeah. And when you come off a family, a mental health suffers, a generational thing. It's hard to deal with, isn't mm. it? But yeah, people look at me and say, yeah, he's a maniac. But I'm a clever maniac. I'm far from stupid. Mm. And I can honestly say, I would never, ever harm anybody intentionally. Yeah. No. It's just not in me. Whatever happens in a fight, the heat in a moment, the red mist, that's another place you go in your mind, isn't it? Mm. You know, but people can trigger you. But smart people, you can enjoy the company of them, mm. like where I sat here. Yeah. You know, like if you was an idiot over there and asking me all kinds of stupid something trying to make me look small, I'd probably tip this table on top of you. <laughs> I would in a second. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it's how you tread, isn't it? Yeah. It's how you tread. Mm. You know, so at the end of the day, yeah, people's right and sensible. I've never had a wrong word with decent people, do you know that? Yeah. It's always these wannabe fighters, these people that's never had a punch in the ear, what doesn't know the other side of it, because they've never experienced it. So they can be cheeky, they can be clever, they can insult you. But like Mike Tyson said, they've all got a plan, and they all think they're clever till they get punched in the face. Mm. As you know from As now. As I know. Fighting pugilism is hard work, it isn't is it? The hard, probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Well, they said I've been doing that since I've been opening my eyes as yeah. a pup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to have a roll around out there, I know what it is for my lungs to be on fire. I know what it is to be feeling pain. I know what it is to have the pressure of thinking, oh, look here, you know, I've got to do this, I've got to do this and got to do that. Yeah. You've got everything combined all in one. And if you wasn't strong-minded, you'd just blow a fuse, wouldn't you? Yeah. And say so tell a lot of it. Yeah. And end up, well, a basket case, basically. Mm. And as you've got you know, more in the public eye, have you felt the responsibility to be a good role model? Do you think about that or do you just be yourself? I know I don't need to think about being a good person because I'm one. You know, the only time you'll ever see me lose your temper is if I've been insulted. That's the only time you'll ever see me lose my rag or if somebody's saying something inappropriate, you know, which I don't think is right. You know, and... Uh, it's just the way it is, isn't it? Mm. So I haven't got to try to be a good boy. No. I'm one. I'm a father of six children. You know, I'm a businessman. I've got my own things apart from boxing. I've worked all my life. I'm not a man who, who leeches off his sons. Nothing. Not $10 off Tyson. Not $10 off Tommy. Mm. Everything I do for these boys is free. Mm. Because I, I'm not interested in money. It don't float my boat. It's caused that many problems in my life. Right. You know, I don't need money. I don't like money. As long as I've got enough to feed myself with and pay me bills, I'm happy. There's my old car in the car park, 32 year old, an old red Mercedes. Yeah. Gets me from A to B. People laugh at me driving it. But you know, keep laughing. That's John Fury, I'm not interested. Ah. You know. Well, what, what's happened with money in the past then with relationships? Well, it just people changes people, doesn't it? Right. When you've gone from having basically an hand to mouth existence and all of a sudden you've got money in abundance, people change. They think there's somebody else. Now, if I was a gentleman, I'd have been in relation to high society people. I'm a gypsy, a uneducated, dyslectic gypsy. And I try to use my manners as best as I can, what my mother and father taught me to do. You know, my mother and father used to say you can be respectful, and you can be decent to other people. And it doesn't take a brain surgeon to do that. Mm. And that's how I've lived my life. You know, and I don't need to try to do anything, me, because I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm a nice, easy-going person. It's like we were sparring here yesterday. I seen the kid take a good shot. I stopped the spar. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I said, mate, give yourself, give him a minute. I said, he ain't getting paid for this. He's helping you. Yeah. So right, give him a minute. That's what kind of a person I am. You know what the kid done? Pat him on the back as he walked past me. He said, thanks for that. Yeah. Or any other gyms, I don't want to see him on the floor because it makes their man look good. Yeah. I said to my son, whoa, stop. Mm. Recover. Well, go when you're ready. Yeah. That's a decent person. Mm. And that's what I am. Yeah. You know, I'm a decent person. I think people know that. But if you want to try and make a fool out of me or disrespect me, you're going to see the other side of me. Mm. Like you would. Yeah. If somebody tried to disrespect what you was doing and your character and your job and your life, you are not a mental health sufferer, are you? You're not, are you? No, my dad is. So well, I've okay. experienced But it, how yeah. would you feel if somebody was trying to disrespect you and you knew it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not raised like you, so it might not end in a fight. Um, You'd be disappointed, wouldn't you, in that yeah, person? Yeah, I would, and I, oh, and yeah. I probably um, would disassociate with that person mm. and might even want to tell other people bad things about that person. Yeah. Yeah. 
The only people, the only thing people can say about me is running, had run-ins with me in the life is saying, well, listen, treat him right. Yeah. Man sound. Mm. Try and be a dickhead around him and he'll hit you yeah. in a split second mm. and I will. Mm. You know, I don't care how old I am or how old I'm not. You upset me, you do it to me because I'm going to do it to you. Yeah. And if you get the better of me, good luck to you. Yeah. Because I'm going to definitely try and get the better of you. Mm. So you're basically saying you will treat people how they treat yes. you. Yes. And the nicer they are to you, the, the nicer, nicer you. The nicer I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. More nicer. Yeah. I like these people in here. Can I see these people in this hotel? You know, they've even said to me, oh, well, off the internet, you seem totally different. You know, you're such a, a gentle kind of a fella. You know, you, you treat people right. You know, you open doors so people let people walk past you first and all that. It's called being a human being, isn't it? Mm. You know, I had a good teacher in my mother and father, were very good teachers. Yeah. You know, my dad couldn't stand an ignorant, bold child. <laughs> That's what he used to say. Yeah. Bold child off him got a good hiding. Mm. And if we stepped on the line, you got it round the head and a kick up the backside. Yeah. Done. Mm. Then you learn. You can talk to a child all you want. Unless he feels the wrath of you, he ain't gonna listen properly. Mm. Especially with people like or our character. Me and my family, when we were kids, we had to have the slap up the ear hole. We had to have the kick up the backside. Yeah. We had to be shouted at. We used to have the stick, get the belt. He used to get a swishy stick off the edge of it. I'd whoop, 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 whoop. That was when he was naughty. Do you think the world's gone a bit soft now? Because Too soft. Do you? Because, yeah. you know, that's really frowned upon in parenting. Well, there's no deterrent, is there? What deterrent has a child got? Yeah. You can get away with anything. Yeah. You know, when my mother and father said no, they meant no. No good asking them twice. I never said, oh, why? Why can't I have it? Because if you said that, you was met with a slap up your ear hole. Mm. And my dad said, you and your brothers will appreciate how I've treated you and your men, because you'll be able to stand alone and go through anything. Mm. And you know what? He was right. Mm. And I thank my father every day for them kicks up the backside, the slap from the back of the neck, the belt, the stick. Thank you, father. You made me some man. Mm. Yeah. And that's a nice thing to say about your parents. Yeah, it is. And it's hard for parents because Tis. your kids don't understand until they're 25. Too late then. Yeah. They're molded out and getting away with what they want, saying what they want, doing as they want. Yeah. If I say to my kids when they're small, you ain't going nowhere, they ain't going. And they know not to even ask again. They know not to move because they know they feel the other side of me. Yeah. And that's how I was with them. And look at them. Today, all fine, strong, healthy men looking after the families, going to work every day, supporting the families. And they do it at will. Mm. They do it because it's normal to them, it's the norm. They're not worried about, oh, can I look after my family? Can I do this? Can I do that? Because I've said to them, there's a lot of work in the world, go and find some. Mm. And that's what they do. And yeah. I'm a proud man of them. Mm. So people can look at me and say, oh, he's this, he's that. And all my sons are relative like machines. They can all handle themselves. They're all rough, tough cookies. People walk around them instead of to them. Because they've got the horror about them. Mm. As that they will not be messed around. But nice, gentle people. Mm. But they've got the horror about them where phew, wouldn't like to mess with them. Yeah. And that's how I've moulded them. Yeah. And this um, Netflix documentary, it was huge. Yeah. It was huge. Apparently it's the biggest show on Netflix, Get smashed away. all the numbers. Has that changed anything for you? Not really, but all I can say is, there was great people put it together. Yeah. You know. So you enjoyed it, it did it you? It was you a liked great doing team, it. loved doing yeah. it. Well, it was a new thing for me. You know, and I, I didn't even think they would, they'd want me in it. But you know, there was Demi, Laura, Tina, all the boys, you know, they followed us around, we just started with the cameras and we had, we had a good rapport with them. Yeah. And I enjoyed every second of that programme with them. Mm. I enjoyed the people, you know, and it wasn't like work. It was so enjoyable. I used to look forward to them coming yeah. with the cameras. Yeah. I used to love it when they used to come and see me in the field with my wagging, my horse and my dog. Yeah. They'd come and I'd have a smile on my face and Did they used to make me laugh. It, was that a little place you'd go to relax or do you actually live there? No, I just relax and go from yeah. place to place in the summer months, sometimes in the winter as well. Yeah. But when I used to see them, I used to, I used to get a light in my eye with it. I used to say, you know what, <laughs> this is great. Not because of the exposure, not because of wanting to be somebody. To interact the way we interacted with the cast and the crew, and this, you get to know people, don't you? Mm. And you know when it was over, 
I sort of felt sad, you know. Right. Because yeah, I'm thinking, oh, I'm probably never going to see these good people again. Mm. You know, but that's not the case because they do phone me regular. Yeah. And keep me, they told me it, everything was a success. You know, it wasn't just, for me, a TV series. It was getting to know people from other walks of life, what I could only dream about. Yeah. You know, TV makers, filmmakers. Where would John Fury get to enjoy something like that at the ripe old age of 58? Yeah. You know, so I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved the cast, loved the people. You know, if they ever want to do another, I'm up for it. Yeah. And Tyson is, because you know what? You get to like people as well, don't you? Yeah. And not one time did those people ever infringe in our privacy. Mm. Not one time. Well, there was no inappropriate questions, no inappropriate TV. It was done professionally. Mm. And what I said to them, if you don't want to film me as I am at the beginning, don't bother. Because yeah. you're filming me as I live my life. As it happens, you know, because I, can, I, I just I can't act because I couldn't act. Yeah. wouldn't know how. So I said, if you want me to act, don't even have me in it because I'll make a fool of myself. <laughs> if you want to film me on a date, I will, I will live my life how I, am, how I am with my family, crack on. Yeah. And that's what they did. Right. And I can only commend them for it. Love the people, love the programme. And I'm honoured to have been a part of it. Mm. And has fame, do, do you ever think about it? Has it changed you in, in any way? Or does it make your life better or worse? I'm not famous. So I'm you not, are? I'm not famous. I've done nothing to be. I'm only the father of some people. What's done well in their life. You know, Tyson's a famous man because he's got reason to be famous. Heavyweight champion of the world. Biggest sports person. And Tommy. They've done a good job on Love Island, they're mm. Molly May. Yeah. They've earned the right to be famous mm. because I call people what's done something in life deservantly. They're famous. Yeah. But me, I've just been famous for being myself, I'm a yeah. people's tuned in to me because probably I'm a bit different. They don't know what's coming. They think, oh John Fury's coming. We're like, oh, we're gonna see some fun. <laughs> yeah. If that's yeah. what you call fame, well, yeah. Well, I mean it is nowadays. Yeah, I think you're being a bit falsely humble because obviously you've raised some really good kids. I've so. raised some good kids. They've been yeah. a good father. They've had good mothers. You know, we've all worked hard and in hand to do what we can do with them. You know, and uh, away from everything else and all the dust settles, I'm a family man mm. who wants the best for his family. You know, but uh, like I say, they've done stuff to be famous and I've not. Yeah. You know, and maybe I'm because we would not be sat here now having this conversation if it wasn't for. The Gypsy King Tyson Fury. We would not be having this conversation. No matter how my antics are, no matter how much people laugh at me, how much how people want to take the mickey out of me, it wouldn't be happening. Only because of him. Mm. Because there's a lot of other famous people out there and they've got fathers, mm. they've got mothers, nobody sees or ears of them. Mm. It's just that me, with my character and personality, it comes through a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Because I, I'm a bit. I don't know. Well, I say, well, life. And I like to have a good time with stuff. And I can get in free for all. And I can make a dull situation into a, an happy one. Because mm. I love that kind of thing. Yeah. And if you're not bothered about getting a punch in the ear, <laughs> or you're not bothered about being shouted at, or you're not bothered about being insulted, <laughs> yeah. it's fun and games, isn't it? Because yeah. what can they do to me in my lifetime? If I live another 10 years, I'll be lucky. You know, in my lifetime, I've accomplished stuff through being a dad mm. to them boys, you know. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, if people want to hear what I've got to say, all I can say is thank you boys and thank the viewing public every day. Yeah. You know, and I try to put a smile on the face, but there's no acting. I'm more authentic straight through me. I wouldn't want people to get the wrong idea of me and say, oh, you know, it's this, that and the other. You know me from the last podcast. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. You ask me a question, you get a direct answer. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to offend anybody. If I don't want to answer you, I won't answer you. Mm. But if I think people's going to get something out of it, I'm going to answer you yeah. with a direct question. Mm. Obviously, I'm not going to get myself shot, am I? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm not going to throw any punches. I've only had one fight. <laughs> so I want to talk about hunger. Mm. Because we've, we've got an interesting stage in both Tommy and Tyson's career. Yeah. So obviously, let's start with Tyson. Yeah. Um, because they've, they've built a brilliant career in a very different way. And, and, and Tyson obviously tried to retire, um, and, and now he's come out of retirement. But you, he, I think he said this, we, we found this, but basically said that um, he'll only come back to get the biggest bags 
not the biggest belts. Uh, we, f we found that quote. And so, um, do you think Tyson still has the same hunger now he's at the top as he had to get to the top, and is that a risk for him? You see, for Tyson now, all these belts, he's already got had them. He's been to his Everest and climbed it and conquered it, so he's had them belts. But Tyson, he'll set himself a goal in his mind where, okay, I see all this. I see he wants to top the Forbes rich list and all this job. Mm. He just sets himself goals, doesn't he? Because yeah. he's done everything else and he thinks, okay, now, I probably want to go to Hollywood and I want to be the richest sportsman in the world. He'll set that goal and he'll do nothing but try to achieve it. And that's where he's coming from here. Mm. He's looking at all these celebrities and saying, hang on a bit, yeah, okay, yeah. I can beat that record. It ain't about the money, because he couldn't spend the money he's got now already, you know. But he just thinks, okay, I'm the best heavyweight in the world. I'm going to be the richest heavyweight in the world. I'm going to be the richest boxer out there. He wants to be known as the richest boxer right. and take Floyd Mayweather's title off him <laughs> in a different way. So, you know, so that's, what, that's how I see it. That's right. how his mind ticks. And do you think that it's a bit similar to what you do? Do you think that keeps him sane and focused, new goal, new goal, yeah. is good for his mental health? Yeah. Because you could see on the TV show a bit that bouncing around the walls wasn't really great for him, or it seemed like it on the show. Mm. The thing is with him, you can see him on TV, what he's like, mm. dipping in seconds. Yeah. yeah. You can see his mood changing. It happens so quickly, doesn't mm. it? Mm. You know, so he's thinking now, Especially now he's in in talks and in business meetings with the Saudis. Yes. He's looking how wealthy that country is. Ooh. And he's yeah. also now all of a sudden click. <laughs> he's yeah. gone money mad, <laughs> you know, thinking he can compete with the Saudis. Because <laughs> that's how his mind works. He wants to be on the same level as them boys, which right. is impossible. Mm. They've got more money than sand, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of sand in Arabia. <laughs> so, you know, but that to me, I can tell now he's floating his boat. Because he's never come out and talked about bags of money before. Yeah. But being around people with trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, it's going to make you think about money yourself. And they've made Tyson feel inept with these few quid. <laughs> That's why yeah. he wants more. It's only because they put it in his head. Yeah. And he thinks, hang on, I've got nothing. Because compared to them, <laughs> he mm. hasn't got nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he wants to be thinking now, yeah. I could probably be on these men's level. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah. But, it's, but that's his mentality. Well, it, and it's really good to see him come alive again and entertain again and I think do the, what Saudis, great. the Saudis now have given him that new buzz. Yeah. They have. Because I was over there with them and they're very engaging people, very knowledgeable and the likeable people. Mm. And the longer you're there, you don't want to come on. Yeah. Because you're thinking, there's not much back in Britain. <laughs> no. All the fun's here. Wow. Everything's happening there. Yeah. You know, and they make stuff work. If they say they're going to do it, they do it. Yeah. And do it with cream on, don't they? <laughs> you know, and yeah. honestly, I was in awe of these people, and I don't get in awe of a lot of people. Yeah. But like they've done, they've made Tyson think about money, riches, and wealth more than they did before. Because, like I say, if you hang around with people that's potless, you'll be potless yourself. Mm. If you hang around with people with no ideas, no ambition, you'll have none yourself. But you hang around with people with goals and ambition, all of a sudden you develop goals and ambition yourself. Mm. You want to achieve yourself. And the Saudis have made Tyson want to achieve even more than he's got now. Mm. And that's where the money thing comes in. It's yeah. through the Saudis. You know, because he's gone around them and seen all and thinks, hang on, I've got chicken feet compared to these boys. And I think it's bothered him. Because right. he's realised that his money is not a lot of money. A lot of money to you, a lot of money to I. I'll never see anything like that. I wouldn't see the, the, the small change of it. I wouldn't want to. But that's where he's at now. Yeah. He's moved on to the money goal because the Saudis have inspired him to make more and more and more, more money. Right. That's how I see it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And then Tommy. So Tommy's yeah. obviously taken a very different route. I think Tommy's done brilliant. I think he's forged a great career for himself. He was on the show and got to know him. But of course, obviously he had Love Island. Yeah. He's now raising a child. He's got uh, Molly. Has he got the same hunger? Because it's yeah, he's gone a different route to Tyson. 
the, the hunger with Tommy will always be there because he's a fighter. And I'm his father and I will keep him hungry because he's got unfinished business. And I said, if you get used to silk pyjamas <laughs> and silk sheets and all the luxuries that where you're at in life can bring you, they'll bring you down in the end. It'll end there for you. Mm. So what you've got to do is take it and run with it and still keep you hunger and still be mm. humble. You know, and still know there's a lot more to achieve. There's, there's a lot more work to do with Tommy in life yet. What's his unfinished business? His unfinished business is to do something and win some proper titles. What we set out to do in the beginning. Yeah. That's what I want him to do. I want him to make plenty of money, which he is doing. I want him to excite people. I want him to be right with people. I want people to enjoy him and what he's doing. And I want people, most of all, to get inspired of what Tommy's doing. Because mm. five years ago, who was Tommy Fury? No one. Look where he is now. Yeah. Millions of Instagram followers. He's on every TV station. You know, in his own right, he's as big as Tyson. Mm. Really, on a different format. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The only thing that sets him apart from Tyson is Tyson's accolades and Tyson's achievements. You know, and I'd like to somehow or the other instill in Tommy that those achievements are achievable at 24 years old. Because, okay, you can have the money. That's okay. There's other people got money. You can have the big house. There's all big houses around here. You know, yeah. there's, every, there's people around here every bit as wealthy as Tommy and Tyson. But what they haven't got is that lifetime achievements. Mm. They've probably got a good job and they're happy. They've done the same thing all their life. But why not achieve goals? You're not going to say, okay, at 24 years old, I've got this money, I've got that money, and, and stop it there. You know, I want him to set a fine example for his children. He's got a daughter now. You know, he's got, he's got a, a brilliant missus. You know, they work together. She's a good businesswoman. She gets on with it. They're achievers, these people, and that's what I like about them. Molly's an achiever. She wants more. She wants to inspire more people. She wants new ideas every day. And I want that for Tommy. Mm -hmm. I want the new ideas to keep coming through so we can inspire other people out there to follow in Tommy and Molly's footsteps. It can be done. Yeah. But if you say, okay, today, I'm happy with me a lot. What's he going to do for the next 40 years? <laughs> He's going to have a boring life, isn't he? Yeah. You know, so I say keep going. Keep doing your thing. Inspire other people. Enjoy your job. Look for new ideas. But achieve something what goes down in history. I can, t I can tell you now about 20 millionaires. You won't even know any of their names. But when you talk about people like any great sports people, football, tennis, snooker, boxing whatever, swimmers, let them achieve gold medals, championship belts, cups, you remember the name. Mm. You remember the great players like Pelly and all that, mm. years and years ago. The Maradona, you know, George Best, they live on forever because they've achieved and they've gone down in history. Going down in history is what you need to do. Right. And do you think these fights with people like um, Jake Paul and KSI, do you think they're distractions away from the achievement? Or do you think that's his path and then he'll... No, they're achievements in their own right. Jake Paul and Tommy was the biggest fight in the world at that time, whether they like it or not. It was the biggest fight in the world at the time. There was all superstars there. It did millions of... Uh, uh, around the world or something, didn't it? The pay-per-views mm. was through the roof on it, you know, and everybody knows them. So they've, they've took part in a crossover fight, what was the biggest crossover fight in the world, and there probably will never be another one as big. Right. You know, because Jake Paul and Tommy was every bit as big as Francis Nagano and Mike Tyson. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. So that's an achievement. Yes. That's history. People will remember it. Yeah, it's just a different path. Different it's just path. a non-traditional path. Non-traditional path, but... A cross the crossover boxing's taking over, by the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, it it's, is. It's what are your thoughts on that? Are they, well, because you, know, you, you were you thought it was quite good for the sport last time we talked. Does you still think it's good for the sport? I'm even more up for it. Yeah. Because it's giving more people chances to make something of themselves. You know, and the people can't make it in the uh, square ring. They can make it in the octagon, can't they? Mm. You know, there's different paths to go down. And I just think it's open channels up for people to try harder. They get inspired and think, oh, I can't box, I'll have a go at that. Yeah. 
you know, now they're coming together and it's causing the crossovers. People want to watch it, don't they? Yeah. They want to see it, they find it interesting. Mm. And if that's the case, they've won, haven't they? Mm. Yeah. They've won. Because nobody wants to watch a ball fest on the telly no. where you know what one man's debt we it's uh, out the blue if the other blue corner wins. People are sick of that. Mm. They know when these crossover fights here they happen, they're as real as they're ever gonna get. Yeah. Because both men are trying to prove a point. They're trying to make their sport better than your sport and vice versa. So there you've got a slugfest, haven't you? Mm. There's probably not the same finesse, not the same skill set, but the trying is hard. Yeah. And that's what people's paying for, mm. the effort. Uh, my, um, I mean, I've all, since I got to know Tommy a bit, I thought, a very grounded, humble guy. Yeah. But my respect for him when he won the Jake Paul fight yeah. went up tenfold because I don't think people can really understand the pressure on him to lose that. I mean, even you said his career might be over. His own well, it would have been. It would have been. Yeah. Because they were saying... He's going to let the all the boxing down. He was carrying that weight. The boxing world. Which is unfair. Like, really. Unfair. Yeah. You know, people was having bits of games with him and saying, oh, you've got to change the name. We know it's only banter, but it can affect you mm. at that level. You know, and that kid at 23 years old was carrying the weight of the world on his back. Because he knew mm -hmm. when he, a loss to Jake Paul would have been mm. disastrous. Was he nervous? Well, I had to train his mind for as long as I trained his body. Right. I said, look, at this level, welcome to the big time. It's one big mind F, let's say without swearing. Yeah. But if you can control the mind F, you're a winner. Yeah. Because if you can't, there's the door. Mm. Just be a bill filler, be an average ordinary person. If you want to be extra ordinary, you've got to be able to beat this and a lot of people can't, mm. that 23 year old. I said, forget everything in the world. Forget what people say, they're not doing it. Forget what people do, you're doing it. Mm. The ball's in your court. I can only take you so far, but it's up to you. If you want to be somebody and go down in history, you need to deal with these situations. Forget who's at ringside. Forget about any kind of promotions. Forget about letting people wind you up. Tunnel vision. We set a game plan, stick to it. And that's what he did. Mm. You know, he made it a little bit hard for himself, but pressure caused that. Yeah. You know, because if he hadn't been pressured, he'd have stopped Jake Paul. Because after what we was doing in the gym, he never took in that fight. Pressure right. again. Yeah. And not one person in the boxing fraternity or in his own country thought he was going to beat Jake Paul. And that's why. Wow. Yeah, not one. They all say. I did. I well, had Tommy all the way. You got all these hot shot presenters, all these pundits. Tommy can't win, Jake Paul, Jake Paul, Jake Paul. So either they was jealous, which I think they was, the green-eyed right. monster swayed the judgment. Yeah. That's why I've never bothered with them. I don't mention any of the names, I don't want to see them, I don't want to work with them, I don't want to do nothing with them. Because they showed me what day it is, mm. where they are, you know. And like I said to you in our last interview, people like you to do well, but not as well as them. Yeah. And he, look what he's done. He's knocked all of them out with a cock hat, hasn't he? Yeah. You know, the no, he's, he's exceeded them. They've been in the job years, got battered to death and not got a quarter of the money Tommy has. Yeah. And they can't deal with that. People's good fortune. Wish them luck. Yeah. Wish them luck. And I tell you what, your life will improve as well. Mm -hmm. Stop being jealous. Be happy for them. Because it's destiny. You know, look at all these rock stars, look at all these movie stars, look at all these kings and queens. It's destiny. So embrace them, wish them luck and say, you know what? Fair play. Mm. You're the chosen one. Yeah. Tyson, destiny. Because the upbringing he had, where he was from, he was the most unlikely looking world champion you'd ever see. Yeah. I didn't even want to connect him with boxing. He never had the personality, he never had anything, but look where he is today because it's his destiny and nobody can stop destiny. It's like me now, I'm sat here with you, but if I've got a date with death, I'm on a collision course with a big D, there's nothing I can do to prevent it. It's gonna to happen to me. Mm. So what I do is think, you know what? I'm dealing with today while I'm above ground. And everybody that does well, you know what I say? Good luck. And I want to enjoy what they're doing. 
You know, I look at all these people, all these massive stars. I'm not sitting and regretting what they're doing, thinking I'm a waste of time, I want to be like that. I'm saying, yeah, go on. I'm entertained. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, where would we be without John Wayne? Where would we be out without Humphrey Bogard, Cary Grant, Sylvester Stallone, mm. all these great people, too many to mention. I tell you, our lives would be dull. Because what do we do when feeling dull? Click the TV on. Those big stars are there to entertain you. Mm. Even though they're getting paid millions and millions and got exotic lifestyles, when I click my remote on, I'm entertained. And that's what it's about. Good luck. Mm. All them Rocky movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. All them Westerns, all them army pictures. I'm entertained mm. by people's brilliance. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I want to be like that. Oh, I hope you die because you've done all right. That ain't John Fury. That's not me. I want to enjoy. I want to enjoy your expertise. Mm. Mm. Is there a problem with that? No, I think it's a great way to live life. Of course. Yeah. Like the kings and the queens. Yeah. I like the processions, I like the gold carriages. I like the millions of people tuning in. You know, I watch it all. They're there to make your life better, mm. entertain you. Okay, there's a few down times, a few sad times, there's ups and downs in every walk of life. But most of all, 95% of the time, you're enjoying it. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. There you go. Amen to that. Amen. <laughs> what, what are your honest, real thoughts about Jake Paul? Because it, it seems like at times you want to really respect what he's done for the sport, and at times it seems it gets a bit under your skin. My real thoughts about Jake Paul. Very clever, witty, intelligent, and an excellent business kid. If he was my son, I'd be very, very proud of him. You know, I'm not going to knock him because now the Pauls and the Furies, they're like set in stone, aren't they? You know, and everybody needs a dance partner, but again, I'm commending brilliance. And that's what you see in Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Mm. Brilliance. And I enjoy it. Yeah. I don't wish him uh, ill or, oh yeah, oh he's a shizer, I can't watch him. He's big headed, he's cheeky, he's leery. When the job's finished, it's only a business. I enjoy them kids. I really enjoy them and I mm. admire, again, brilliance. They're entertaining me. Logan, that day, I watched the video back and forget what I done. When he was stood on that thing going that with his hands there, he's going like this. <laughs> he was loving watching you, wasn't he? I loved it. <laughs> I was sat on my bed and I laughed at his, at his movements <laughs> for one hour. I forget what I was doing. <laughs> he was on top of where he stood on top of his arms everywhere. People were throwing things, he was following it with his hands. <laughs> Hilarious, mate. The quality, mm. brilliance again, and they entertain me, they inspire me. And I say to my lads, be like them. You can't knock a kid like that 24, five year old, him and his brother. Yeah. Multi, multi millionaires, world, world famous. They're rubbing, they're rubbing shoulders, every, everybody worth knowing. Good luck to them. Yeah. Brilliant. I remember one of the guys who trained me, who was an ex UFC fighter when I had my fight. And he said, there's a weird thing that happens in fighting, which most fighters don't understand, non fighters don't understand, whereby you can end up becoming very good friends with the people you get in the ring with. And I'd never understood this, because I just assumed you'd be arch enemies. But like you Why? said, well, Why just because be arch I, I guess because I didn't know the fight world and you just think, oh, you know, they're, <laughs> but like, like you said, like Jake Paul and Tommy Fury would not have achieved individually what they've achieved without each other exactly. in the ring. This is what I'm saying to you. But would they hate each other out the ring? No. But no, I wouldn't have thought they admire so. one neither, Yeah, neither of them are Deep really down like inside, that. like I say, you got to admire those kids. Yeah. And I know deep down inside, they'll admire what we do. You know, because if they didn't, they wouldn't be the characters they are, would yeah. they? Yeah. You know, they're caring boys, have me. And I'll tell you what, people again who knock them are jealous of them. Mm. I've not got a jealous bone in my body. I love to see people's family do well. And like I say, if they can entertain John Fury, I'm up for it. <laughs> you know, if I can see him on the oh, what's Jake saying today? Click me video, oh, let's, <laughs> have, let's have a look at a Jake Paul rant. Let's have a look at a Ro Logan Paul rant. Where would we be without all these rants in this dull world today? Yeah. They keep me wanting to live on. They inspire me to get to another day. Yeah. 
because if I get a bit of dull time off, stick Jake Paul on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll just have a quick look at Floyd Mayweather's antics mm. on on all the other great names, you know, and I, I I love what people's got to say as well. Yeah, like I I really like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, intelligent guy comes out with some great sayings, you know, and I've watched him from being a, a young boy, you know, and, and I, they inspire me because he still look good. Mm. They're still working, they're still making movies, they're still making my life a better place. Yeah. Him and all the other great actors out there. Mm. And he's not, he's just one of them. I admire all of them. You know, and mm. why wouldn't you? Yeah. I love success. You know, it's even when I see, I see a dosser in the street, you know, and I'll pull up. I'll say to him, only just weekend, there's a dosser. He's on the front. I said, look. I said, how old are you? 35. It's not okay. Yeah. What's your outlook in life? Apart from being sat here, feeling sorry for yourself, waiting for somebody to give you a fiver or a tenner or a pound coin. Isn't that what you want? I've got another choice. I said, you have got a choice. You have. Because there's like-minded, professional people out there who want to help you. You can find work, I said, but you don't want to work. And all you're doing is feeling sorry for yourself. You know, but have some pride. God's give you a life, live it out properly. Mm. Don't waste it like you're doing now. Now I said, what I'm gonna do for you today, I've told you them things. I told him where he could get help, where he could find work, professional people to get in touch with, and I'll take baby steps with you and get your life back together. And for now, I said, I'm gonna buy you some bread and cheese, some chocolate, some fruit, I said, and a pie, in case you're hungry. Now I said, think about what I've said. Don't ask me for money, I said, because I don't like giving money because it goes on the wrong stuff. Now I said, I'll feed you and advise you. That's the best I can do for you today. I said, it's the best you'll ever get today because I care about you, I said. 35-year-old, mm. I said, you could meet a young woman, have a nice family, get a good job, you know, and there's lovely people in the world today to help you achieve that. So why not embrace them? Mm. And I know that, me, a stupid man like me. If I'm in trouble, I've been taught by my parents, there's professional people out there, caring people who want to help and they can change your life. So there's no excuses, is there? No. no. Anybody can be what they want to be in this life. Mm. Anybody. If you want to be a jogger and you're overweight, you can be a jogger. In a year's time, you're a jogger. You're a slim person. It's mindset. Mm. If I want to lose four stone tomorrow, if I want to lose it that bad, I can. Mind over matter, isn't it? Go for it. And failure is not an option. Because you can't fail today, because there's too many good people who want to help you. And everyone who wants to, everyone who has an art in the body, Rob, wants to see people do well. Not sit outside of a shop being a dosser, people walking past you, feeling sorry for you. Nah, life's too precious, my friend. Mm. That's what I say. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, I completely agree. You know, advice on food. Yeah. What can you do? The problem is when you give people money and they don't know how to handle the money doesn't change their life, it makes it worse. Um, I, you, it would be nice if the government made more effort to get people back into work rather than just doling out welfare. We, but again, they do, don't they? There's plenty of places you can go for work. True. Yeah. There's plenty of places, places everywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. So we can blame the government for everything, but the government's provided these places yeah. where you can go. Well, you have Those places I've, I've told you about, the government's provided them and they're paying these professional people to help you out of that situation. Mm. So you can lead a horse to water, but whether it drinks or not, it's another matter, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but listen, can't blame the government, blame yourself. Yeah, well, 100%. Because I can find work. Yeah. If I'm skint today, there's somebody out there wanting a job doing. I'm not going to sit outside my legs crossed waiting for somebody to buy me a pie or drop me two quid in my lap. No. I'm going to go and look for some work. <coughs> Excuse me, madam. Good morning. How are you? You got something wrong with your roof or your window frames need painting, your door needs fixing, your fence needs doing, your grass needs mowing, that going on and on and on. Somebody's going to want something doing for a fair price, aren't they? Yeah. 
better than begging. Yeah, hundred percent. And it. So, what's your exact prediction for the Tommy Fury KSI fight? How does it go? Well, we have to knock him out, don't we? We've got to knock him out. And why is that? Because we have. Because you know what? We cannot leave anything to chance. So we're training here. We've got the right kind of sparring in for what we need to do. So you're training to knock him out? To knock him out, yeah. 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 There's, no, there's no other option. No. Because anything can happen in a boxing match. You see all these bad decisions. You see all this bizarre stuff only recently. We don't want to be part of that. No. And when you've got knockout power, use it. Mm. So we're training to put him out, yeah. Right. And if he doesn't knock him out, it'll be that convincingly, nothing can go wrong. Yeah. But if he don't knock him out, I'm going to be very, very, very disappointed. Right. Very disappointed. You know, no pressure, like. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. we know what we've got to do. Tommy is so much better than this man. You know, it's only mindset what stops him from knocking him out. He'd have knocked Jake Paul out, only for the pressure. Yeah. You know, because what we've seen in the gym against ranked fighters, you know, but again, it's mindset, pressure, the occasion, it all adds in, but again, mind trained. But he's been on the big stage now, he's been on the big performance with Jake Paul. So this year now, he's got the experience. He's got the experience of it, and yeah. he's that much better. You know, he, he can cope with it now. Mm. He didn't know what to expect, expect before, nah. but now he comes through with flying colours and this. Unfortunately, KSI is going to meet a lot different to Tommy Fury than what he's seen in front of Jake Paul. He's in his own town in Manchester as well, you know, and at the end of the day. This kid's got power. Mm. He's hurting heavyweights at the minute. Right. He's hitting heavyweights and hurting them, you know. And at the end there, we've got speed guys, we've got lighter men, we've got heavier men, we've got unorthodox men, we've got everything. Because no matter who it is, I take this shit serious. You know, because I treat everybody what's game enough to get in that ring as a threat. And if they're training as well, and they want it, and they've got a set, it's up to me to make sure they're capable and ready. And that's what Tommy will be. Mm. He's, he'll be a monster when he gets in that ring. Right. And how do you rate KSI compared to Jake Paul? Do you think he's better or not as good as Jake? To be honest with you, they're all on the same level. Right. You know, put them all in the bag, shake them up, and it's which one you like, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? Right. But Tommy is leagues above these people. Yeah. We've got unbeaten kids here now, unbeaten pros in the gym here. Right. You know, and um, you know, and both of them guys are not the quality of these men we've got here. No. You know, so all it is, Tommy's that much better than them. But I gotta praise them. I mean, are they are, are, are they to be respected as boxers? People like Jake Paul and KSI, in terms of how good they are. Why not? Yeah. Well, they're getting in the ring, aren't they? You mm. know how hard it is. Yeah. You had it the other day. Mm. That's hard work, mate. And I can say this much. You know. When everything, all the dust has settled, when everything's still, you've got to say, well done, boys. Mm. The game have to get in, aren't they? The fighting men, if they wasn't fighting men, they'd be in a different job. Yeah, and they're fighting people with more experience. Well, um, yes. Yeah. It, he, he's coming up in front of Tommy, and behind all the bravado, he knows Tommy can fight. Yeah. He knows it's a problem. He knows his game's on the line as well. Yeah. Not so as much as Tommy, because if he was to lose, he's meant to lose to Tommy. Nobody's expecting him to. And deep down inside, they're not expecting KSI to do nothing. But KSI will have big expectations, big expectations yourself. Mm. And credit to him. Why not? So yes, I commend them in mm. every way. Mm. Whether he's as good as whether he isn't, it's all on the night, isn't it? But I train Tommy in a way that he's going to take some handling yeah. from the off. Mm. You know, we've got six rounds to do it or less. You know, so we know what we've got to do. And don't forget, I'm experienced in this job as well. Mm. Very experienced. I've been fighting all my life. I know what it takes. I know what we need to stop his gallop. We're doing it now. Yeah. We're doing it now. So I don't see any other, any other outcome but a knockout. Yeah. Whether it comes in the first round, second or third, it's coming. Mm. It's coming. Because he'd have got Jake Paul out of there. But all the occasion... All the weight on his shoulders now it's different. Yeah. And you know, he's gearing up and he, he, he's whacking away with both hands. Mm. And Tommy's a tough kid. 
He's not a kid you can hit and he'll shy away from you. hit him, it's like putting petrol on a fire. Right. He's going to come straight back at you with more and more. But if Jake Paul can, if, if uh, sorry, if KSI can land a decent shot in him, I'll be surprised. You know, mm. you know, he'll be just at him and he'll be relentless. You know, if he thinks he can run, he'll get the ring cut off. He'll be intercepted and blown away. Yeah. Because he's got the strength to do it. He's got the size to do it. He's got the stamina to do it. He's got the self-belief to do it. And one's a fighter from his backbone. I don't know much about this other guy. How much does he want it? When he's feeling pain, when he's seeing blue strikes all through his eyes, when he's feeling everything, when his legs and his lungs are burning, then you know whether you're a true fighter or not. And they've never had that experience. Never had that experience. Nah. He has. Yeah. Because he's been sparring with the heavyweight champion of the world. And Tyson won't take no prison of me. Tyson will kill you in that sparring ring. Brother or no brother. He'll smash you to bits. Mm. And then call you a useless so and so afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what makes him as hard as iron. And if he can get lugged around with him, I've seen him do 10 or 15 rounds. And they're thudding away at one another. Mm. You know? Yeah. And I've, met, I've heard Tyson, I'll smash their muscles right through you. <laughs> you know, because he's probably got an inferior complex Tyson because he's a bit loose flesh <laughs> and, he, and he wants to prove a point. Yeah. <laughs> Saying fat wins every time. <laughs> <laughs> he's tough enough, don't worry. Yeah. He's, be, he, he, he's been in the trenches, Tommy. Mm. Even in the sparring, even in some, some of the fights he's had, he's been caught, he's been it. You know, and at the end of the day, he's only a novice himself. Mm. Ten fights. Yeah. You know, so, look, I'm quietly confident. Yeah. And then what about the Tyson and Ganu fight? Is that one that Tyson's taking seriously? Is that going to be a real fight or more of an exhibition? How's that going to go? Well, you've seen him, haven't you? You've seen the look on his face in Ganu. I, I, I would take that guy seriously. I, I mean, would. He is an animal. Well, to be honest with you, he wants to impress, doesn't he? And this now's his time to shine. Yeah. This is his golden opportunity. Exhibition. No chance. No. No. Might be for Tyson. But the minute Tyson sees him coming full force, this is going to be... It's going to be a smasher. Do you think Ant and Gann is really going to go for it? Yeah. And he's got some power, hasn't he? That well, one? you won't want him to hit you around the head, would you? <laughs> no. I've seen him lift men out of the ring. I've seen him, I've seen him slice men's faces off. We'll want yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, they're coming from un, un, uncouth places, aren't they? Daft big shots. Yeah. You know, and you can't really train for these people. You can't prepare for them. No. But let me tell you, it's going to be a rough, tough job. Yeah. You know, and he's got 10 rounds to do it. And I think Ngannou's tough enough. I think he can hold the shot. You know, and he'll want to impress Mike Tyson, won't he? Yes. You know. How do you feel about Mike Tyson training the opponent of your son who's named after Mike Tyson? <laughs> well... <laughs> that must be a bit of a... Pinch yourself moment. Well, it, it is for me because, you know, at the end of the day, I think a lot of the guy, but I don't know. It is what it is and it's business, yeah. you know. And maybe I'm going to take it you don't hold it against him for no, doing no, that. No. no, no, it's business. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it at the end of the day. But pff, it's a strange one, isn't it? But I, I could look at it and I could, I could easily go the other way looking at it. Let's right. put it that way. I go the other way as in get upset. Yeah. Yeah. I could do if I looked at it, you know, I'm thinking, okay, you should be in Tyson's corner, really. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, he, 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 he's named after you and this, that and the other. Yeah. And he'll know, he knows that, doesn't he? He knows yeah. it, yeah. only. But at the end of the day, everybody needs to make a living. Yeah. And Mike Tyson at the minute is making a living, isn't he? Yeah. But let me tell you, I'll probably say something to Saudi about it to him. Yeah. I'll probably tell him straight. What, the... You're a bit upset about it. Yeah, I'll yeah. say, listen, I'll probably call him a traitor or something. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Yeah. But uh, like I say, let them do what they want to do. Yeah. You know, and uh, he can do what he wants to do. Yeah. I'd like to fight him on the undercard. Well, this is it. I wanted to ask you about this. Is it, Are you just sort of no, teasing you want to fight him? Definitely not. There's my right hand to God and I'm a Christian man. Yeah. You want to fight him. You believe me, I want to fight him. You want to fight Win, Mike Tyson. Win, lose, or draw, I'll fight Mike Tyson. Wow. Don't you worry about that. Do you think you could make that happen? Well, they can, the Saudis. I know they can. Yeah. They can. Do you not have any idea if Mike's up for it? I don't know. You don't I've know? I told him. So yeah. listen, let's do something. You know, but like I say, it's desire, ain't it? Yeah. You know, he's been to the top of it. 
you know, he's probably got to try and get himself up for something like that with me. I mean, that you know. But you, listen, you fighting against the that like, person, you know what? Everybody's got one good performance. Yeah, in true. Yeah. And it's all right looking at me when people put me worst performance. Oh, I'm not video. judging. It's just he listen, was the world champion. What you've got savage. to say about all of this? Yeah, he's savage. But no, I had, don't forget, I had eight wins. Mm. I beat the Italian heavyweight champion. Yeah. He was six foot seven and a half and eighteen stone. He was the Italian heavyweight champion. I beat him. I beat the man who beat the man who beat him. Yeah. Kevin McBride, do your own work. Kevin McBride, yeah, stopped Mike Tyson, didn't he? Yeah. Michael Murray stopped Kevin McBride. And I stopped Michael Murray. Right. So I'm in with a chance. Yeah. He's effed. And I'm effed. But I think I'm a little bit better conditioned than him. Right. And I know I'm every bit as strong as him. Yeah. I know I'm strong as him. But listen, if I'm wrong, Mike Tyson put me right. But do you want to fight me? I want to fight him. On the undercard. I don't need weeks of training. That's it. Let's fight. I'll come over there with my bag. will jump straight in the ring. We'll get the money sorted out. I'll climb straight in. It's only going to be a short fight anyway. Yeah. The two men's going to meet in the middle of the ring. It's the first one to hit the floor, isn't it? And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I'm totally, I'm there if I'm there. Shouting for you, John. All the haters, <laughs> the dreams can come true if he knocks me out, fair play. Yeah. They've had a good day, haven't they? Yeah. If he chins me, he chins me. But I'll try and chin him as well. Yeah. And would you go for the knockout? If you Straight fight? away. Would you? Middle of the no, ring. No to, I don't know how to box. I don't know how to fight any other way. Right. All my fights have been a front foot job. Yeah. And that's it. Because if he gets me, he gets me. He probably will get me. Yeah. But I could get him as well. Couldn't yeah, I? Yeah. I'm a big man. You know, I'm yeah. nearly 20 stone in weight. I do 10k runs. I can spar with these boys. I'm, I'm, you know what? And like I say, I'll just turn up. I don't need to have a camp. I fought all my life. Right. A man's cheeky to me. I, there's no time for a training so camp. So you'd fight next week? Yeah, if you well, to. fight today. Really? If he was there now, it, he upset me. Me and him have to have a fight. Because that's the way I am when lose a draw. Right. It's like the way I've lived my life. I've no time for a training camp. If a man's insulting me in a public house, or if a man's insulting me down the road, I can't say, oh, wait, I'll fight you in three months when I get fit. <laughs> Let's bring it on. Let's do this shit now. That's how I am. Yeah. But if he wants it, he can have it. And that's my right hand to God. And I'm yeah. a Christian man. I'm frightened of no man with a pair of arms or a pair of feet or a pair of nuts. I'm frightened of no living being. I'm afraid of God. Yeah. But the rest of it, no fear. Do what you got to do. Because right. I'll definitely do it to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that comes up. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. Make me a rich man. All right. And, and I would celebrate that. Do I'll you... probably get me a good hiding as well. But there you go. Well, I have plenty more. I have plenty of money. though. I'm Who... not bothered. No. I'm okay. Like you said, you've got the experience. I've got the experience. You stay, you stay yeah. ready and fit. Stay ready. I'm strong. I don't take any kind of drugs. I don't eat well. I get to sleep. I'm training all the time. I've never smoked in my life. I hardly take any alcohol. Yeah. Oh, listen, I'm 58. We know that, but he's 57. Mm. But I'm a big, strong fella, so is he. Yeah, maybe a fairly even match. Well, he's got the accolades. Yeah. Good luck to him. But there's one thing I got. is a pair of balls like King Kong. <laughs> And I mean that from the bottom of my eyes. Yeah. And anybody who thinks I haven't, step forward mm. and test it. Yeah. And see if you can beat me. Yeah. Anybody. Do you think um, Tyson will ever fight AJ? That seems to be the fight that should have happened for the, for, the, as, for the British public as a fan and hasn't. And has that ship sailed now? Yeah, it's a good question, Rob. I mean, is AJ even good enough anymore? Do you think he wants to get in the ring then? I think in AJ's case, looking at his last performances, he's on a build-up mission for a big payday, isn't he? You know, they're going to try and match him and tread where the grass is low, get fights he can win. Right. But when well, I, I look mean, at... Him and Tyson would be a big payday for them. Is it, it though? From what I'm seeing now, it'd be a relatively a mismatch. Really? Yeah. 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 And I mean no ill feeling to AJ at all. No. He's been a great champion. Again, he's inspired me. I've had a lot of great pleasure watching him fight. He's not the same kid anymore. No. AJ is not the fighter he was three years. Whatever happened when Andrew Ruiz stopped him, it all went wrong from yeah. there on. He's never recovered. 
You sick for me, you ain't worth a carrot. Nah. He's a cruiserweight. He showed you what happened the other day. You know, he needed 20 minutes to recover. Yeah. And only for being the star of the show and groomed for bigger things, it could well have been a new champion. Mm. But them, again, chuck them all in the bag, it's who you like. But Tyson's levels and leagues above them. Right. But will he ever fight him? I don't think so. No. I think that boat sailed and gone. Because AJ's mindset's not where it needs to be for Tyson. He needs a big win. The only way that fight could happen, and it would happen, if AJ was to beat Dante Wilder. Right. Then Tyson would say, oh, oh yeah. He'd, take, he'd look at him. But at the minute, Tyson isn't even considering him as a threat or nothing. Do you think there's a chance AJ beats Wilder or no chance? Unfortunately not, no. No. You know, Wilder for me, He's not my most favourite man in the world. He's a terrible sportsman. He's like a big kid. You know, he's seen his attitude when he loses. You know, but can the man punch? Yes, he can. Has he got a pair of nuts? Yes, he has. You know, and you, you can't be... You can hang your chin out and let Wilder hit it because he'll put you to sleep forever. Yeah. It's only the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, can take Wilder power. Mm. No one else can take it. It's no. been proven. Yeah. Look at Alenius. Dead as a nit in about 30 seconds, wasn't he? Yeah. A little, little six-inch punch, dead as a nit. He had a good old do with AJ till AJ caught him, you know, on yeah. a week's notice. So when you look at the pros and cons of it all, he had so little notice, Rob Zellini's, he still went he still went seven rounds, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. So how can you compare him to a man who would have knocked your brains out with either hand? Yeah. And he's not the most elusive person, AJ, is he? He's not a lateral mover, no. his head don't go anywhere. I just think he'd, I think he'd just be suicide for him. Right. But if he was to get the win over Wilder, well... Do you think Tyson might then... Absolutely. Yeah. It, the flames reignited, isn't it? Yeah. But he's got to do something big. Yeah. It's no good beating these bums and expecting to get a fight with him. Because Tyson ain't up for it. He's looking no. at bigger challenges. He's looking at John Bones Jones and you know, all this job. Yeah. For a bit of excitement, you know what I'm saying? He knows none of them over every can beat him. Yeah. He'll smash Usyk to pieces. Whenever he fights Usyk, if ever he does, Believe me, it won't even be a contest. No. I know people are getting on Usex back saying he's the man, he can do this. Let me tell you, he can't. He can't. No. I relatively, look what a novice did the other day with him. Yeah. A 24 year old novice. Little men can't mess with big men, no. especially a good big man. And a good big man beats a good little man. And Usex a very, very excellent, good little man. Yeah. You can't mess with Tyson. No. Nah. No. Too much artillery, too much skill, too much brains, too much strength. And when he hates you, there's no get offs with him. Mm. Which, like I say, if I'd have been looking after Daniel Dubar and whatever, he'd have been the heavyweight champion of the world. Because I would have stopped that fight there and then. I'd have said, hang on, no, we've won. We've won on a knockout. We can't knock him out twice. I'd have ended the fight there and then. Right. But they're rookies, aren't they? They're rookies at their own game. Yeah. They think they're clever, but they're not clever. Yeah. I'd have said, right, it's over. We've won. Had a massive protest. We'd have all invaded the ring. We'd have gone mental. <laughs> there'd have been no more action. There'd been no more action. And if they'd have been sharper, they'd, they'd have saved the uh, embarrassment later yeah. on. Because people saying he's quit, he's done this, he's done that, he's a quitter. He'd have been saved all that. Yeah. And people would have thought, even if he didn't get the result, didn't get it overturned, he'd always been remembered for dropping yeah. Usec heavily. Whatever they wanted to call it, whatever they didn't want to call it, he'd have been remembered on a bright note yeah. instead of a quitter. Because that's what they're saying now. Mm. Because the team... Didn't look after him properly. Didn't know enough. No. Nah. They don't know enough. No. Nah. They don't know enough. If, if Angelo Dundee... Hadn't have been in Muhammad Ali's corner the night he fought Henry Cooper, Henry Cooper would have knocked Muhammad Ali out. But quick thinking and brains got Ali the win. Mm. They cut the glove, give him time to reset himself, call the referee over, made a big do of it. He went on to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world against only less than one. Yeah. Otherwise, Henry Cooper would have stopped him because he was out on his feet. But in this case, they was found wanting. Right. The corner, everybody wrapped around him. Because mm. I said, no, with one. 
no more, no more, put the hands in the air, left the ring, or we would have invaded it. You can imagine what would have happened. <laughs> yeah, I can just <laughs> see it. Your top would have been off. Oh, that would have been, that'd have been made. Tables flipping. Oh, dear me. <laughs> I'd have slapped the referee till his teeth rattled. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> That'd have been mayhem completely. But listen, you've got to have it in you. You've got to have the oil in your can, haven't you? Well, yeah, and look after you. They look haven't got it. Fire. They yeah. ain't got it. They think they have. Yeah. yeah. There's more to this game than the ICs, my friend. Yeah. But that's just what I would have done. That's my opinion. No one else's. But I could have saved Daniel Labar a lot of embarrassment. Mm. Even if he never got the result, people would have remembered him in a lot brighter note, mm. in a lot better position as well. A lot of people thought he won on the knockout. Yeah. Why mm. but why put your man at risk when he'd done his job, really? Yeah. Whether it was a low blow, whether it wasn't. Mm. It would have been enough for me to invade that ring and call him out to the full affair. Yeah. And what could they do about it? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> 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 you mentioned earlier about um, John Jones, and Joe reckons John jo Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan reckons John Jones has got a, a chance against Tyson. What do you, do you think John Jones has got a chance against Tyson? What in the octagon? I guess I, I, he must mean boxing, because no, because obviously, obviously Tyson's no. not an MMA. No, fighter, listen, is he? let me tell you, as a boxer, Tyson, if you're a non-boxer, you'll chop your face off. But it's what you revert to and what rules you accept, isn't it? Now, like I said in a previous video, let John Jones do what he does best. Let Tyson do what he does best. And Tyson can mix it up a bit. He can nut, you can elbow, you can knee, you can do this, that, and the other. And he's bodily strong. He got the, he's got, you know, he's got the strength of a creed on Bull Tyson. Mm -hmm. You know, you want, let me tell you, a bit of training for that job for Tyson. It'll be a match-up. But as a boxing match, no. Nobody can touch Tyson in a boxing match. Nah. No. But Tyson, if he was going to fight these kind of men, obviously he's going to take training to do it. But when you train a man to do something, it's a different old new ball game. Tyson can be learnt to do his game, but he can't be learnt to do Tyson's game because it's a skill set. Right. And do you think Tyson would actually do that? Do you think he would ever have a mixed fight? A million percent, of course. He would? Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. If the payday was big enough, catch up with those Saudis. Well, <laughs> if, he's, if he wants to catch up with the Saudis, he's got to get all these done, hasn't he? Yeah. I think that's on the horizon. Tyson's on a mission now. He set himself a goal. All these big monstrous names, he wants their scalps hung wow. on the beam of his house. Yeah. That's what he's up to. And he's going to make a shitload of money. He probably will be able to compete with some Saudi. I don't say them top boys, yeah. but there'll be some Saudi out there where he can compete with, and that'll be a mission. Yeah. But that's it. He's going to get a shitload of money. He's going to get a lot of scalps. He's going to let, put a hell of a lot of enjoyment out there, and people can just enjoy themselves, can't they? Yeah. It's big things happening with Tyson yet. Mm. Big things, you know. And uh, let's enjoy it and wish him well. Yeah. And if any of those boys beats Tyson, I'll be the first man to shake their hand and say, "Well done, lad." You as a better man, mm. but I don't think he can. Nah. But I'm man enough to say it, and so is Tyson. He's not a crybaby like Dante Wilde looking for an excuse. He will say, well done, my friend. Mm. Thank you for your time. Thanks for the experience. And thank you for the paycheck. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's the way it is. Mm. Be right about it. You've got, to be, you've got to be, have dignity in defeat, haven't you? But Tyson, he's never defeated in his life about anything. I, try, I watched him do 10 attempts at a five bar gate one time, 20 stone odd. He must have been 25 stone trying to jump a five bar gate. He went to it that many times if he finally got over it. So let me tell you, when you've got a man like Tyson with a special mindset, with superhuman beliefs, he's a threat for any man in the world, including John Jones, you know. But if John Jones tries to box him, cut in half. Mm. It's like him, Ganganu. If he tries to box Tyson, he's going to get sliced to pieces, isn't he? But so if he, how do you think Ganganu wins? By well, Ganganu's got to, he's got to, he's got it in everything but the kitchen sink, hasn't he? Right. Yeah. He's got to throw everything at him. Because if you're going to go and try and out jab the heavyweight champion of the world, what's known for speed, agility, and movement, what are you going to do? Come up short. Mm. 
You know, Angar knows bright, Mike Tyson's bright enough to know that as well. Bright, Mike Tyson will be telling him you've got to do this and you've got to do that because he's fought at the elite level. He knows what it takes to do what he does. Even though it's a mammoth task, he has to follow what Mike Tyson's telling him mm. or else he'll get butchered. Yeah. But is his own game going to come out of him in the fight? Is he going to wing a big kick from somebody, break somebody's leg? Yeah. You don't know what these men are capable because you know when your head's played with, when you think you're losing, because I've been in them situations. I've been in sticky situations and you don't know what you're going to do. Because in my case, I'm telling you straight, I'm getting the win. I'm getting the win. If it's got to be at your expense and I've got to go to prison, I'm getting the win. So if he's got that same mindset, how do you know he hasn't? Mm. You've got a problem. Yeah. A massive one. And this Angano, he's obviously got pride. He's a world champion himself. He's got the whole of his country behind him. He's got the whole of the world looking at him. You know, and everybody's waiting for somebody to challenge the Gypsy King, aren't they? And take him to the wire. Will he seize his moment? I don't know. Until I meet him and speak to him in person, which I probably won't. But I can tell what's going to happen with a minute's conversation with him. If I spoke to him within 60 seconds, I'd know his demeanour. You know, you can see it in their yeah. eyes. I mean, it sounds like he's had the struggle growing up, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean a thing. I've no. been struggling growing up. You know, we all take knocks, don't we, here and there. Yeah. But I can tell in a man's eyes what he's got. Yeah. I can tell a man with them steely desires where you're in front of them, they're looking at you. You know you're going to think, and you know yourself, and I know because I've been involved in them situations. He's looking to do me damage this man. Mm. No matter how they look at you, how quiet they are, there's just something in their eyeballs that say, I'm gonna F you up, mate, bad. Mm. I've seen it. Yeah. I've been, I've, I've, they've tried to do it. And many a time, if I had been big and strong and I savaged myself outside and pull all the stops out to get the win, mm. that's it. And I've never lost a street fight in my life. Never? Never. Never even come close. What's the hardest fight you've ever had on the street or in the ring, or the hardest situation fight you? Well, in the ring's different, because you can only do the punch and you've got to be fit, haven't you? If you're not fit in the ring and you don't, you've not had the eight week camp, and you've not had all the sparring, you've not had all the diet, you're going to come short, because right. it's a sportsman's carry on. Yeah. You know, but outside, you know. How's it different on the street? Well, you can use everything you've got, can't you? Not just your fist. Not just no. your fist. And then men wouldn't live with me on the street. No, 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 they wouldn't even live with me. Because the things I, I'll do to you in the heat of the moment, you wouldn't, you, 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 they give you nightmares, mate, mm. to be honest with you. But that's me. That's what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm a street fighter. So if you want to fight me, come prepared. Have you ever been close to losing on the no. street? No. Not even close? No. The, sh the street fights normally, are they over a bit quicker? Quick, yeah. You know if you're still fighting after a minute. It's really? It's oh, so that's not normal? No. 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 If you, like me. And I was a decent fighter in the ring. I wasn't a bum in the ring. I got to number three in Britain, number four in Europe. You know, and I think I, I, I boxed some world-class men and they my own. The only time you see me get knocked out in the thing is when I've been out for five years, fat as a pig and never trained at all. Yeah. Just turned up on a Saturday night because I'm bored. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when I took my time to train and this, that, and it was, I was a decent boxer. Mm. I was tough and everything. But you know what? I, had, I got a desire to win. And that desire, for me, happens to be a little bit more than anybody else I've ever met. Yeah. You know? Because it can be intimidating. You get a man to like the size of me coming at you, and, the, and the people know that I'm a bit dangerous. Mm. It's over pretty quick. Yeah. You know? But if they try and foul me, like they try and bite me, or they try and do things to me. I'm going to do it back, but 50 times worse. Right. Are there any rules on the street? No. None? None whatsoever. It's up to you what you're going to do. Right. But obviously, if you see a man down and he's distressed and he's no threat, what you, if you, you, you stop. You stop. Yeah. yeah. You stop. Yeah. You're only fighting like a wild animal when somebody's fighting like a wild animal back. Right. But when you see a man down and he's injured, 
that human side of you comes to play. Right. It comes into play where you say, oh, hang on, the man's got a family, he's got kids, leave it. Yeah. Enough's enough. Yeah. You walk away, wash your face, go and have a glass of beer, <laughs> and just assess your injuries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And did, did you used to get a lot of injuries? Do you find like knuckles and wrists, is that an issue? Look. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. battered. They're battered to death. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I get arthritis in my feet in the cold weather. Look, yeah. my hand border on crippled. You know what I'm saying? So mm. uh, it, it, it's got a price to pay, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day. God, that one there looks like almost indented. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone, the flap. This, look. Yeah. But they've earned me living in my lifetime. They got me out of a lot of sticky situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, they've they've enabled me to be the man I am. Yeah. And there's a lot better people out there than me. You know, but I don't see anybody with any bigger art than me. I must be something to breed the king of the world, mustn't I? I can't be an absolute waste of time when all my sons can have a fight. Every one of them, one's the best fighting man in the world. So mm. it comes from somewhere, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it comes from somewhere. You know, I'd be called a decent stallion, wouldn't I? I'd be a decent stud horse if you want a fighting man, wouldn't I? Mm. Decent, if you want a fighting man, you wouldn't want no better stud than me, would you? <laughs> huh? Nah. Truthful, are we? Yeah, I'm not denying it. You yeah. know, because at the end of the day, the proof of the button's eating it. Yeah. I'm game. I'm game, you have to kill me to stop me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you're knocked out, you can't go on, can you? You don't know what day it is. Like when you get it in them rings, you don't know what day it is. You're so exhausted by the time you do get chinned because you're not fit. You're not bodily fit. Three minutes ain't 20 minutes with an athlete who's been trained to put your lights out. And you've only got one defence. And if he's a bit better than you with the old gloves on, what are you going to do? Mm. Big man's 18 stone, watch on the chin repeatedly. When you're out of it, you're out of it, aren't you? Mm. You know, but like I say... <laughs> Without a pair of gloves on, you know. Different. When that big nut does smash across the bridge of your nose, and that elbow hits you in the temple, and then you can't see. Then you grab hold of them. Then you buckle them to the floor, and then you're on them then, aren't you? Mm. Hey. Mm. <laughs> I better stop before I get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you're getting a bit excited <laughs> there, John. <laughs> uh, it's being bodily strong, in it? Being violent and bodily strong. Right, yeah. yeah. So there was only one thing we wanted to um, bring in this interview that was also in the last one because it's so important. You're a massive advocate for mental health. Oh dear, yeah. And uh, never stop banging on about yeah, it. Yeah, and Harry said, you know what? Well, we talked about it in the first episode, but I said that's the one thing we've got to talk about again. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's struggling, they're alone, they can't cope. Um, as someone who's dealt with it and helped your son deal with it, what would you say to them? I would say to those people. There's a lot of good people out there, a lot of sound advice. I go to those places very regular in my life. You and know. that doesn't embarrass you? You don't feel no, ashamed? No, not at all. No. You know, I've cried my eyes out before they've run to people. You know, it doesn't make me a lesser person. You know what I'm saying? Because feelings and emotions are different to what I've been talking about. And people can't help the way they feel, can they? No. Like me, if I'm on a down day and I'm... I've been suicidal, but I'm experienced to know at my age now that it's a passing thing. It don't stay. So you have been suicidal before? Oh, You've thought about oh that? Oh dear. Really? I think about that many a time. Wow. Even though I've got sons, what's multi-millionaires, the kings of the world, the champions, sometimes I get up with them and think my life ain't worth living. Why do you think that is? I don't know. You know, you can have the whole world and you ain't got nothing. A little thing can upset me, like, somewhat daft, like you think could never upset you. It'll get to me, I'll nosedive me. But all of a sudden, when I've hit the rock bottom, I think, I'll shake myself, have a nice cold glass of water and think, let me get my armor, I'm gonna fight back. I say, okay, Mr. Mental Health, let's have a punch up. I've never lost on the street, I ain't gonna lose with you. You ain't beating me. And you know when I get back up, and I feel my strength coming back, or my head's coming back right, I'm proud of myself, mm. somehow or the other. Well, that might be the biggest fight you've ever won. Yeah, well, it's one I have to fight with every week mm. of my life, without fail. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, oh dear me, I can sit in the house for three or four days at a time, and think about my life, and I think, you know what, 
could have been better. I could have done so much different. But I try and turn the negatives, which is a lot of them in my life, into positives. What are that, some of the negatives? The negatives are you feel a waste of time. You feel like, you know what, pff, these kids would be better without you and all this. That's what happens. And um, I don't know. Shit in it, basically. It's like now. Dipping. Mm. Mad, isn't it? Mm. You go from one level to another in seconds. The hell. Mm. Let's move on. Yeah. And then at the same time, though, you know, you give thanks every day and you're really grateful. Yeah. And you know you've been a good father. Mm. Does starting to think about those things help lift you back up? Well, because you know you're a good dad. People, you know, you're a good man. Yeah, you know, you can only be there for them. I've been all, all a step of the way. But people can lift you, can't they? It's like now, if we wasn't doing this now, when you dip so quick like we do, you think, oh dear me, I won't have a lay down. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But talking to people and being here with you and knowing that I'm probably going to help somebody else mm. is good, isn't it? Yeah. Never be ashamed of who you are. You know, feel like crying, cry. Yeah. No less a man, are you? No. You know, feel upset, get it out, don't hold it in. Because I'll tell you, knowing your old emotions in, That's it's painful. Worse, yeah. It hurts, doesn't well, it? It can actually make you ill, can't it? Bro, yeah. it's painful. Yeah. I get pains in my throat, pains in my feet, pains in my chest, pains in my head. Right. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah. And it's all emotions, trapped up emotions, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but like now, you know, but it goes as quick as it comes. Because mm. it's like a switch in your brain, isn't it? It's like there now. I was thinking about all negative stuff, talking about it. If I talk about it for 30 seconds, I'm living it. Right. I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I trigger a switch from within like 30 seconds. Now I'm getting back to where I was. Yeah. But at, for a point when I think of all the negativity people's got in their lives, and you look at people struggling like mad, young people killing themselves. Yeah. It's mind blowing, isn't it? Mm. You know, when you hear about young people taking their lives and whatnot, I'm thinking, instead of me doing what I'm doing, I should be trying to help these people more and more. But then... But you're just talking about it now. Talking about now, that trying to help people. people. But the trouble is then, you, you get indated with different people and all of a sudden your mind don't become strong enough to deal with it. Oh, because a lot of people will ask for help, you mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, and, and sometimes you're the one needing more help than them. Yeah. If you, if you understand what I mean, Rob, you know. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It's a difficult one. And, I, it, you know, I've always said it, that mental health is a bigger pandemic than anything we've ever seen. Forget COVID-19. Forget all these uh, variants. <laughs> that mental health, uh, it's a slow touch. It's just done to me then, within a second, a big, strong man. Yeah. It's humbled me and took me straight to the ground. <laughs> I'm ready to tap out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it seems more and more people are struggling with yeah, it. Yeah, cool. Way more. Way more. Do you think it was always like that, but people were raised to never talk about it? Or do you think it's got worse? Well, it has got worse, hasn't it? It seemed they, to get double worse. You see, the lockdown. thing is now, you're living in a world where they can get so much shite and they think it's going to help them, but it's sending them down and down and down, i.e. drugs, alcohol, bad company, mm. you know, doing daft stuff, thinking it's going to take the misery away, you know, but at the end of the day, it doesn't. Nah. The only thing that combats this is looking at it rationally, and if you get bad, speak up and say to people, I'm not well today, I think I might be uh, slipping that far, I need a bit of help. No shame to ask for help. Nah. You know, I used to go to my mother and father and yeah, my head's gone today. My mother said, what's up with your son? Oh, mum, I'd say I'm terrible today. And she'd just say, sit, have a cup of tea. You'll be all right in an hour. What's the problem? You have a chat for half an hour. You're back in the game, aren't you? Mm. You don't go and lock yourself in the room. Nah. When I'm feeling rough, I'll go and walk out. There's plenty of people out there. And their good vibes will bring me back on track. Yeah. Because I'll get talking to them who's, who's not depressed and um, I will be smiling with them. Yeah. I'll be talking about normal stuff. You know, I can be out of character, 
and he enjoyed it kind of thing, but without the proper help. And not having the guile to source it, you're only going to go to one place. Mm -hmm. Like me, I don't take medication because I, I refuse to do it because of who I am. Why do you refuse to do it? Because I'm fighting it myself. Because you know what? If you get medicated, you want medication, you just think to yourself, okay, I'm a loser. And I don't want to lose this battle. And I want to inspire every person watching this podcast today that it can be done because I can do it. When I stop here with you, I'm going to click the switch, get back in the gym with them and do my job. Because I have to, for their sake. My feelings don't matter. But their good vibes will give me good vibes. So hang around with people with good vibes. Yeah. If, you, if you're poorly and you can get down in seconds, you know, talk to people who's going to pick you up and advise you properly. Never listen to crap. You know, it's like when I was in prison. Everybody was a lawyer. Everybody was a barrister. And they knew nothing. Only all they do is cabbage your head. <laughs> but when your own lawyer come, your own barrister come, talking proper to you and giving you hard facts, yeah. you know that listening to everybody else is just rubbish. Mm -hmm. Listen to the pros. Yeah. It's like Tommy's not going to listen to a coach who's never had a boxer in his life, is he? It's the same as me. I'm not going to listen to a man who's never had mental health or has never had anything to do with it. I'm going to talk to people the highest in the field. You know, mm. and that's the way it is. It's like me and my sons, we're all, we're, well, we're all tearful people. Big Shane, big massive man, six foot six, 27 stone. You'll probably cry at the drop of that like me. <laughs> I've only got to think of sad stuff and negative stuff. And this inner softness comes out when I don't, I never thought I had. But I must be soft somewhere, mustn't I? Mm. For it to happen to me. Yeah. But not in my head. Because it depends what mode you're going, doesn't it? What gear you're in. You know what I'm saying? I don't know after I'm whether I'm in I or low. You know, I don't know. Mm. But when I walk at that door in a minute, I know one thing. That if I've helped one person, all oh, this has been worthwhile, hasn't it? Mm. You know? Because people look at you, the man has a box of frogs in. But it's not, it's feelings, isn't it? You know, I've had a lot of crap in my life. What's gone on in my life is horrible. You know, I've lost all my family within years. And it can take its toll, can't it? And you've got to be, you got no one's made of iron. No matter who you are, you're skin and bone and blood, aren't you? And 80% water. You know, it's just what we try and be, what we mould ourselves to be when we're kids. What we inspire to be. And my, my only goal in life was to inspire to be a strong rock of a person your family could look up to and respect and admire. Because if I couldn't do that, I wouldn't want to live. Forget money, forget fame. If I'm, a, if I'm a no good person, I'm not a good father, not a good parent, I'm a waste of space, we've got plenty of money. I'm a nice car. Does that alter my job? It puts me straight in the dickhead category, doesn't it? <laughs> and I don't want to be one of them. I'd rather be like I am, nice and humble, speak to people, help people, you know, and let them be nice to me so I can be nice to them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, completely. So there, yeah. And, and does it um, sometimes scare you that you maybe see some of these traits in Tyson? Yeah, well, you know, it's very frightening to be honest with you because Tyson, like all he does now, behind all that persona he gives out, the I am I is probably the softest, gentlest person on, on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you can be a great and you can be what you are. Because there's two sides to people, isn't there? There's mm. that loving care inside, which we've all got, you know? Yeah. And, and when you think of sad stuff, it's just a melting job for us. I don't know why it happens like that, but it just does, you know? If I see people upset, badly, I get upset myself. <laughs> and I've got no to be upset about. Mm. I don't like seeing people upset. It's yeah. horrible, isn't it? Bad vibes, so they call it today. You don't know, keep out the way of it. Mm. Just say, listen, pick yourself up, it's a brighter day. Yeah. There's plenty to smile about in this life, in this world. Look at the lovely sunshine we just had. I sat Yeah, everyone moaning about how it's too hot. Oh, I'm thinking, can't, make, can't keep them happy. Well, that, that ain't me. I, Rob, I just sat out there, you know, I thought, the world's a lovely place. 
You don't have to be rich, you don't have to be famous to enjoy it, do you? No. Just do your thing. Do your thing and be yourself and be nice to people. Mm. And if you can't advise them properly, don't advise them at all. Yeah. You know, because the last thing people want when they're not well as at, when they're not well is bad advice, isn't it? And it's all right, people saying do this, do that. It's hard to do it. Mm. It's hard to do it. And like I say, I've got to be like I am myself to get from day to day. Yeah. Because you see now I did there, that, that didn't take me long, did it? Yeah. You know, and you, but I'm used to it now. 58 years of it. You know, I watched my father with it. You know, because my father go down the road and punch a windscreen out the car. Right. You just like that, bullet full windscreen all over the bonnet. Get out, smash it up. Feel better then? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's how he was. Mm. And that, but he, he but with me, I don't know, it just goes the other way where you just want to, you know, get to a point in your life where you just don't want to dip. But we all do it, don't mm, we? Yeah. You watch most of my, most of my things I do, I can go to them points. You know, I, I try not to, my, I won't let my mind go to sadness. Because if I do, my day's ruined. Mm. I won't go there, Rob. You know, it's like I thought of sad stuff there. And I thought, phew, it's too heavy for me. Yeah. Even for somebody like me, who's, who's stronger than most, it's too heavy for me. Mm. I can't carry it. So I tend to, phew, Get out of there. Get out of there, yeah. quick and sharp. I'd rather do 10 rounds with Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson together than have a minute of that mental health thing. Wow. Yeah. So let's switch it up then. What are you really excited about at the moment in your life? What excites you? What projects have you got going on? What gets you up in the morning? What's next other than maybe a fight with Mike Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, you know what gets me up in the morning? Knowing the position I'm in now, I can improve somebody's life. You know, and half the people that come speaking to you, I've watched them. Some are shaking, you know. Some are trembling. And I'm thinking, I said to one lady the other day, I said, listen, don't tremble. I said, I'm no one. I'm just like you, I said, you know, and it's good to see you. Never be afraid to talk to nobody, I said. You don't need to tremble. You're as good as me, I'm as good as you. We're all human. Nothing separates us, I said, because when you die, and when a queen dies, the hearth, that comes out the old is the same what goes back on top of you. No different to the king, queen, or ordinary people. Nothing separates us. Only in life, accolades, what people's, other people, other humans, are put on other humans. When you look at it in the cold light today, we're all the same. Mm. We're all the same. Kings, queens. It's not, it's not like a king's got three heads and we've got one. It's not like you've got three brains, is it? Or six arms. You know, so what do they get alarmed about? Why shake? Note to shake about. I said, you consider yourself as good as anybody. Stand up straight, put your chin in the air and smile and engage mm. in any topic you want. It's not hard, but some people, and I thought, oh, I, thought, I hope I've not offended anybody. I thought it might have been my appearance on me, the way I look, you know. And it was, sort of, it was sort of like freaking me out. I'm thinking, the woman's actually like that. And, and blokes as well. <laughs> Fellas, big burly lads. Yeah. They're coming, they're all discoloured. They're all tongue-tied. And I'm thinking, my God, whatever's wrong. I said, calm down. Does that make you feel a bit weird? No, it, like it does. Yeah. It does, that's why I said, are you okay? <laughs> you think all right? Are yeah. you all right? I don't know. Oh no, it's just I've been wanting to meet you for a long time and I've finally met you and it's a bit overwhelming. So don't worry. Let me get you a glass of pop, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a glass of lemonade and I'll chat about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what gets me up in the mornings. Yeah. Stuff like that. Because people without them were done. Were done. And you know everybody's nice, aren't they? Yeah. Everybody's nice. And even if you get somebody that's not so nice, you're a chat to him and telling the rights and wrongs or air. Him or air and they can use their own common sense in any way, shape or form. 
you can get to where you want to be, can't you? Mm. With everybody, and they always walk, walk away laughing with me because I'm not, I don't, I'm not an heavy person. I'm not somebody that's going to try and try and sort people's lives out because I can't do it because I can't sort my own out. All I can do is tell them to be positive, and within half an hour or an hour, something good's going to come along and put you in a whole better mood. Mm. It happens to me. It's happened for 58 years, and I've had the times where, yeah, poor, yeah, suicide. Yeah, better off gone. Yep, 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 yep. That's the way forward. I've been there. But that's no precedent to set as a father when you've got kids. I never in one time, I can talk about it now, but I never talk about it when I was children because they're, they're all going up now. So I said, every parent out there with young children, be a rock. Don't show them kids your feelings because they're impressionable. They believe. And if they think the parents are weak, what, what have they got to stand on? Nothing. Mm. They're on soggy ground growing up, aren't they? They want to be on dry, rock solid ground, looking up to a parent. If you're ill, go and seek help. Mm. We all, we've all done it. We've all done it. Mm. And those people there, they're not trained half the life and paid well for no reason, are they? because they can make a suggestion to you. Well, here is one. When I took Tyson down to, <laughs> we went down to Goodwood somewhere. I think it was to some priory place or somewhere. Went up. I'm saying it because I'm not hiding nothing. Mm. Me and Tyson went there. I was sat in the room and I got as much therapy as he did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm sat there, thought, yes, keep going. <laughs> well, I think he had, mm, right. Mm. And I come out and their arm was so much knowledge. Yeah. And it wasn't directed at me. I was sat in the corner yeah. over there. And it, she was there, this woman, whatever she was, a psychiatrist, that's what they are. Let's, let's, let's talk about it properly. And he sat here and I'm in the corner. But she made a lot of sense in my head as well. Mm. I went out of there feeling a million dollars. Yeah. And so did he. Yeah. You know what we said? We went down to Bogner Regis to get an ice cream. We started laughing at one another. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, you know what? That was therapeutic. He said, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you, you and I, it for free. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, you know what I told him? I said, you paid for that as I've got it for note. Yeah. He said, how do you feel? I said, yeah, a lot better. Yeah. Educated. And it's probably the best ice cream I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. I was watching the, the, they was watching the waves coming out of Bognor Regis having to walk around a, a pretty little seaside town. And we both felt amazing. Yeah. So that's the way forward. Yeah. And when we went there, our heads was falling off. We drove from here, Manchester, let's set early off, and I'll tell you what, it was a bad ride up there. There's nothing hardly said. Every sentence was doom and gloom. All this, that and the other. But on the way back, we were brand new. Mm. Brand new. Yeah. Couple of visits. And this, that and the other. It helps, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, because they're the professional people. Mm. And I never believed in anything like that, you know. Ah. I thought it was all charlatans. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned different. Yeah. You know, because my daddy was one of them. Don't you talk about that, you'll get me looked down on. People think you need a funny farm, son. Do you want to be looked upon as a fool? But it's not, you're not a fool. If it's a mental health thing, it doesn't make you like you're not compass mentor, so you don't know how to cross the road. No. Nah. It's just a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. And no one's got an answer for it. All they can do is make you feel better. Yeah. And it's like the words and what they tell you to do. It's like they're giving you a step-by-step -step course how to get through it, isn't it? How to manage it. And I learnt more that day than I'm managing mine. Because even though I got a little bit upset there, I knew to flip a switch and get back on clock. Because mm. otherwise we'd have to get the Kleenex out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not very really good for my image. But do, but do I care? No. <laughs> I'm a sufferer, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so, look, I know you're in camp, John, so I'm yeah. going to make this the last one. Yeah. Um, this show is called Disruptors. Do you think you're a disruptor? Do you think your family are disruptors? Do you, know, you think you've brought something new to the world? When you say disruptors, in what way? Well, I'm asking you. Well, I don't know what the word fully means. Okay. Disruption means causing trouble. But it can mean causing trouble in a good way. Jake Paul causes trouble. You flip tables and people love you for it. But Could, can you be positively there's disruptive? There's two ways of looking at being disruptive. Yeah. You can be disruptive in a nice way. 
in a comical way, on a business way, are disruptive in a bad way, mm. where you're there strictly to cause trouble. Mm. You want to you wanna set everything ablaze, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want everybody to be upset. That's disruptive. Mm. Now, what, what we do, for, uh, you know, it's okay, I lost, my, I lost my way for a little bit. That's me, I'm going to keep losing my way. No matter where I go and where I don't go, if people say something and I don't like it, I'm going to be disruptive, but not in a way where you're, let's just say, you want to arm anybody or you want to, you know, put an end to it all and, and, and make everybody unhappy or your behaviour. My disruptive is enjoyable, isn't it? Mm. Because you're never going to disrupt me at a boxing show to a way where, you know, I want to take you outside and I want to punch the hell out of one another. You're even never when gonna you get, flip those tables even and rip when that I, show. It, 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 yeah, even when I do all that and this, that and the other, <laughs> it is only what it ever's going to be. Yeah. A bit of a fisticuffs. So you know when you ripped your top off, in front of Jake Paul, what would have happened if he'd have got in the ring? Would you? Have... I'd have punched him. You would. Have... Yes. <laughs> Shit. Yes. Good I'd job he didn't get in the oh, ring. Oh, I'd have hit him. Yes, of course I would. He'd have hit me. Yeah. Because if he gets in the ring to hit me, I'm going to hit him first. That's what it is. Right. But it's only a fisticuffs. Ooh. What I've done all my life. You know, my shirt has been ripped off my back. I would say at least five hundred times in my life. As in, you've just ripped yeah, it off. Yeah, I always fight with no shirt on. When I'm going to fight, I don't like clothes on me. And it's a, it's a traveller thing. Yeah. The two men's going to fight, they're stripped to the waist like the old, the for old boys. For people who don't understand that, because they're not in the community. Well, what? for a travelling man, you get your shirt off. You don't fight with your shirt on. No. I don't know too much ever had a fight with a shirt on. They have a fight with a vest on or something. But I like to be stripped to the waist. If I'm going to fight you, my shirt's off. Right. And is it part of the peacocking process of showing strength? I don't know. I've, I've, you know what? Or is it, you just fight better without a top? No, no. If I'm going outside, that's, that's part of me. I'll, I'll rip my shirt off there and then because I want to get stuck in. Yeah. And I think that's a, a, plim, a, that's a thing, a preliminary right. beforehand. Yeah. You know, you know, I can have a shirt and cost him $500. I'll rip it to pieces <laughs> to get it off me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Chuck it in the edge. And I probably won't even find my shirt afterwards. <laughs> I'll get in the car, undressed. Stripped to the waist, whether I've got blood on me or not, I'm not going to look for my shirt. No. Don the shirt. Forget the shirt. I'm on another planet. <laughs> I'll get another shirt when I calm down at the shop tomorrow. <laughs> well, I just want to say a massive thanks, John. This has been thanks, so much Rob. fun again. And I think you're doing great things in the world. I think you're inspiring a lot of people. I hope so. And also, you know, being very open like you are, I think that's great. There's no mo the one thing I want to finish on here. There's nothing fake about me. There's no pretense. I'm an armless guy, but I've got pride. And I, and my pride to me, you know, it's all I've got. You know, I'm carrying a name that don't belong to me. It's my father's name, his father's name, and he's a generational thing. So I believe when we pass on, we're not gone. They're here, they're watching what you do. And I hope that everybody thinks past and present that I've carried the name well. I've done the best I can for it. Mm. That's why I say to my sons, it's not just a boxing match. It's more than that. Mm. You know, that's why you've got to forensically go through it properly to get the win. Mm. Because the name F-U-R-Y, it means more to me than life itself. It's got to be protected. It's like a coat of arms. And did you know we've got a coat of arms to our name? Have you? Yeah. Yeah. I'll find it out and I'll send it to you. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Coat of arms. Right. So even though it might be might mean nothing to nobody, but it means plenty to me. Because without self-belief and pride in your name and pride in who you are, what have you got? Mm. You can have billions in the bank. You can live in a 23 carat platinum gold house. You've got nothing if you haven't got your name and what you believe in. And it's a generational thing with us. Mm. And when I die, all I want to say on my, on my grave says two things. He was a man of his word. He'd done what he said he was going to do. And he never took a back step from anybody in his life, win, lose, or draw. End it there. Mm. He was a man amongst men. And that's what I want to be remembered for, because that's what I am. Yeah. I've never shied away from a fight in my life. I've never been insulted in my life and let him get away with it. I've never took one backward step. And if there's any man out there that thinks he has or ever, let me know, because I've never met him. Mm. And it's a lie. And that's all I've got left. And that means more to me than a trillion dollars. These, my son's doing well, it's add-on. 
this is their life. But I always remember, you're carrying that name. So you do the best you can with it. And I don't mind if you get beat, win, lose, or draw, but give your all. Do the best you can. You know, we all get beat up at some point. I have a plenty of good hiding. There's not been one way traffic in my life. I've been beat to death. Won some, lost some. I know what defeat is. You know, the only time I've never been beat is outside. Look at me in the ring. But even when I was under all that pressure, when I couldn't go on, and you try to get up on you that your legs don't belong to your body, and somewhere your head, your brain ain't engaging the rest of your body, you know all I could think about? The name. I thought, look here. <laughs> look where I'm at. Mm. I'm not supposed to be here because of who I am. But it's humbling as well. Mm. And in life, you get humbled, don't you? I've been humbled a few times. Mm. Not just fighting. In the ring, yeah, a couple of times, been lost. But some people can humble you by words as well. Nice words. Mm. And you don't have to be a big, strong fighting machine to be knowledgeable, to help people and be sincere. Mm. They're the people you want to look up to. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Forget looking up to me. <laughs> Forget looking up to me in any way, shape or form. The people you need to look up to is the gentle, sensible, sincere, caring, loving people. And they haven't got to be fighters to be like that. And I've met loads of them. Mm. And they're my favourite people. Yeah. And you know, even me, I walk away and quietly think, you know, I wish I was like it, but him. Saying I'd have been like him. My life would have been so much easier. Not as much war. Not as much toil and sweat. People would have liked me more. You know, and I, I'd have felt better in myself. And I walk away sometimes from them kind of people and think, you know what? They've just shown me right where I'm at. Well, sometimes nowhere. Because I'm, I'm a nowhere man. I'm a totally a nowhere man. Because I've done nothing in my life to warrant anything. Only be a good father. I've looked after my family as best as I can. And I've put them first. And everything I've done in my life has been for them. That's the only good Tate about me. Nothing else. I want to be nice and respectful to people. And I've helped other people. I'd never see a man without a piece of bread. I'd never see him stuck for a few quid. If I've got it, if I've got £10 to my name and you need half of it, you're getting it. I'll see you. I'll get some more. Mm. I said, you feel good about yourself, don't you? Mm. When you do something nice with people, how good do you feel? Really good. One of the best feelings. Oh, you yeah. never get a feeling better in your life, would you? Nah. When I do something good, it goes right through me pleasant feeling like you'd never ever feel in life and it's that godly thing about you isn't it where it's human nature to want to feel good about helping your fellow man isn't mm. it you know and that's why I like doing and if I can get them feelings every day I'm going to get them mm. by doing the right thing it's like when the sparring there you know young lad took a good shot I stopped the spar said hang on needs a rest they're not getting paid, they're here to help you. Made me feel good about it. Mm. And you know that kid, he come and tap me on the shoulder as he walked past me. Thanks, he said. Mm. <laughs> what, what better feeling you want than that? Yeah. And the kids, aren't they? The kids, so mm. there you have it. We could go on all day, but the result's still the same. Yeah. Be nice to people and they'll be nice back. If they can't be nice to you, pray for them. Mm. And in the name of God, Thank you, Jesus, for this good company and getting the word out there, trying to help people. And they can still get an insight to where it all started. It has all started from me, a crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so much fun. Real pleasure again, John. Thank you, Thanks mate. a lot for doing it. God bless you, Rob. Yeah. If you want us to get Tyson Fury on the show, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on and we'll keep bringing great guests like John Fury.